Good evening and welcome back to a bonus venture into the world of Drakenheim. My name is Monty Martin and I will be running our game this evening. And Kelly and I are joined by some very good friends. For, uh, uh, Kelly, yeah, take so, it away. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm Kelly. Uh, I'm also one of the Dungeon Dudes. But today we're joined by Ben and Dale, who I will get to introduce themselves um, and tell us a little bit about them. Uh, we're going to do character introductions, I believe, in a second. So I'm not yeah. telling you who I'm playing yet. Uh, but get ready for some science some mad science. Um, so, Ben, would you mind introducing yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Ben. Um, I uh, work for Ghostfire Gaming um, as uh, their sort of media uh, content manager uh, person. And my main job at the moment uh, is running the Eldritch Lawcast over there, uh, which is our weekly podcast. Um, and otherwise spend most of my time DMing. I was just saying before we started the stream, this is the first time I have played D&D as a player in probably at least a year, if not two years. Um, so uh, I'm very excited to be able to like relax kind of for a session and not have to worry about all the other moving parts. Awesome. Thank you. And Dale. Hi. Yes, I am Dale Kingsmill. I, much like these lovely Dungeon Dudes, uh, have a YouTube channel where I talk about D&D a lot of the time. I'm also uh, one of the other hosts of the uh, Eldritch Lawcast, uh, which is powered by Ghostfire, forged by Ghostfire, I guess. I mean, it's not a book, Something. but it's a podcast and it's attached to Ghostfire Gaming and I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> One, wonderful wonderful and kelly and i have both been guests over on, on the lore cast and had so much fun and I, I i was saying just before we we started that i am so looking forward to playing uh games with both of you because we've had wonderful conversations but uh tonight it's time to roll some dice this evening we are play testing the new character options that Kelly and I have created for Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim, which is the book that we currently have on Kickstarter that we are actually partnering with Ghostfire Gaming to bring to life. Um, and so for those of you that have been checking out, following the Kickstarter along so far, or ha haven't heard of that yet, you can find out all the details at drakenheim.com and get on that Kickstarter because we are vastly expanding the world of Drakenheim and adding new player options, new subclasses for every class, but most importantly for this evening, a brand new class for fifth edition, the Apothecary. And we gave Dale and Ben the full range of all of the new player options, and let them decide what they wanted to pick. <laughs> and what happened was <laughs> everyone picked an Apothecary. <laughs> We got excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're 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 team science uh, tonight, and we're going to be playtesting three different apothecaries. What I'm really excited about tonight is when we created the apothecary. One of the goals was to create an extremely versatile class that could go in many different directions, based not only on the subclass that you choose, but also the spells that you pick and the esoteric theories that you use to bring your character to life. Um, so tonight we have three different subclasses. Uh, some of us picked the same spells and same uh, esoteric theories, which really means that th some of them are good choices. But we also have a bit of uh, differences between us that I'm excited to explore this evening. Cool. And with that in mind, for all of you watching along, this is a playtest game, which means that we might run into some bugs along the way. We might run into some rules questions. We might run into some oddities with how the apothecary and the new spells and abilities work if that happens we're gonna figure it out and start taking some notes so we can make sure they don't end up in the final book but just as a as a fair warning this evening some of the, the mechanics that you see are under playtesting they might get tweaked before they emerge in their final form and hopefully we might and hopefully we'll learn a few things about how the class works, especially when you play it in an entire party of them. Uh, and so for those of you watching along, whether in the chat or whether you check this out on YouTube later, we would love to hear your feedback and observations on how things played uh, played tonight and what you thought. Because uh, in addition to playtesting some new classes, uh, there might be some monster stat blocks from the book that are also getting a playtest run tonight. <laughs> 
So we got new spells, new classes, new uh, monsters. And I'm pretty sure I, at least I took one of the new feats from our book as well. Um, so Monty, I'm going to try to use that tonight as well. Fun times. Well, with that, let us set the stage. Along the northern coast of the nation of Westamar, the shores there, an area known as the Crystal Coast. It is a rocky cliffside coast that stretches for several hundred kilometers, and the region here is well known for the great salt deposits and the fishing villages that dot along the coast, stretching all the way from Ash Bay up to towards the northern reaches around Helig. Here, as a thick mist hangs over the shores and a light drizzle of rain falls down upon the, the, gra the, the rocky grasses at the top of the cliff overlooking the beaches, three figures look out towards the wrecked hull of a, sh of a purple sailed ship. Our heroes coming from Altbrook University and their own organization, who I will allow them to introduce, have heard rumors of the Autumn's Harvest, a vessel apparently operated by the Wizards of the Amethyst Academy, which is mysteriously run aground along the Crystal Coast. The rumors from the local fisher folk that have sighted the vessel say that it is derelict and abandoned, with no clear estimate of when it actually washed up on shore, yet rumors spark of strange creatures and stranger magic emanating from the ship, thus the locals fear to investigate it themselves. Our heroes have determined to check out this wreck and see what they may find within. With that, Dale, would you like to introduce us to your character? Certainly. Um, I would love for you all to meet uh, Miss Arabella Sundstrom. She's, uh, she's decked out in just, just really a lot of leathers, um, if I'm honest. Uh, she, she works with chemicals and she doesn't uh, want to get splashed. Um, so she's got, you know, leather gloves that come up her arms. She's uh, got, you know, sort of a, almost a bandolier of little sort of glass vials down across her chest, um, a sort of a, a belt of strange little pouches and odd bottles here and there, um, some sort of small metallic cylinders that sort of are strapped to her leg. Um, and then she has kind of a makeshift, almost respirator mask, sort of a, a rudimentary respirator mask and some goggles uh, ready to go. And which uh, which subclass uh, of the apothecary is Arabella? I'm sure people can probably guess now that she's a chemist. Cool, cool. Which uh, just to share for the playtest, do you have an ability that you're excited to use? Oh, I have a few abilities that I'm excited to use. Um, but my favorite, I think, is um, there's a there's a chemist ability that lets you. Basically, if you have a cantrip that targets one person, you can target two people with it instead. I'm looking nice. forward to seeing that come into play. Nice, nice. Ben, tell us about your character. Yes, uh, my character, uh, Dr. Jacob Grustein, um, uh, is a, a professor uh, from the, the university um, and uh, uh, sort of, you know, wearing a white shirt, vest, kind of like very well-dressed generally, um, has just like some black loafers on, you know, he's not really dressed to go adventuring necessarily. Um, looks every bit the professor with his golden rimmed spectacles, his comb over. Um, uh, he's probably got a jacket on at this point as well and maybe like a satchel or something that sits around his shoulders where he uh, carries a component pouch and uh, anything else that he might have on him. Carries no like obvious weapon or anything might have a few daggers but he's not really trying to hide those they're almost more like like tools rather than like sheathed on his belt ready for action or anything like that um and he's just sort of like looking over the wreck with a a mild look of distaste on his face just you know like like a man 
uh, about to go into the office, not not um, not upset, but just knowing it's going to be a long day. It's going to be like a hard day in the office, so to speak, uh, cleaning up somebody else's mess once again. Excellent. And which I I, I know I can probably guess what you're excited to share, but what subclass are you playing? <laughs> uh, Dr. Grustein spent some time in the lab experimenting with mutation uh, and the effects of delirium on organic matter. Uh, so therefore I am playing the mu- mutagenist uh, subclass. I cannot wait to see that in action. <laughs> uh, and Me for, neither. <laughs> and for those wondering, our characters tonight are level eight. So they will be throwing around some fourth level spells and some mid-level esoteric theories. And Kelly, your character. Uh, standing amongst the other two is what we're pretty sure is a man. Um, he has very pale white almost white skin, and his eyes look like just two black pools. He has slicked back gray hair and is wearing a elaborate black cloak, uh, like a long jacket, almost like, um, almost like a trench coat, but a little bit more ornate. Um, he's a very tall and gangly man, uh, looking like he might be six and a half to almost seven feet tall, but made even taller by the fact that he's hovering a few inches off the ground with his hands out to either side of him, staring towards the wreckage. Um, He seems to have along his belt several gadgets and pouches of miscellaneous items and alchemical supplies, various medical tools, syringes, and other sorts of devices that basically he has a walking lab around his belt. Um, And you notice that he doesn't even grab items off of his belt. He simply moves his fingers and items float from his belt to his hand. And he examines the distant boat with disdain, seeing the markings of the Amethyst Academy huffing at the at the sight of that symbol and mumbling to himself about how insignificant their little institution must be mm. not even able to take care of a boat well oh snap <laughs> oh i should i i guess i should say what i'm playing as well uh i'm playing the alienist this evening and i am excited to use my brain to mess things up <laughs> wonderful Well, here before you, um, you as I said, you you stand along a rocky cliffside shore. So the cliffs here are about 30 feet high, overlooking a small stony beach where there are several rocky outcroppings, a very, very rocky shore. This ship will likely never sail again, for it is jammed between two of the rocks that jut up uh, just along the edge of the beach, uh, the the water's edge. Um, Part of the hull of the ship is partly submerged, and just from this side, um, you can already surmise that it's very likely that the bottom of the ship would be heavily damaged but with the way the water and the rock holds it in place it's not going to sink because the water would be too shallow for the ship to actually submerge uh it is a two-masted vessel once again with with sails that look like more like purple silk than anything else bearing the large octogram in of the Amethyst Academy upon upon the sails. It is a very elegant looking vessel and it does, from here you can see that there are armaments on the ship, but they're, from this distance, they don't appear to have been fired or shot. What has happened on this vessel doesn't look like outwardly that any pirates were attacking it or any sort of um, that the, this was a shipwreck or a battle. There's no signs or s- anywhere of, say, a cannon hitting it or any fighting on the decks. There's not a single corpse in sight. Yet, 
the air here smells faintly of ozone. And you can feel a tingling along your skin as if your hairs are standing up. And for the three of you, you, you know that these are, are feelings that are often the adventurers who have gone to the ruins of Drakenheim speak of this feeling. For it, is, it conjures up the idea of the presence of that maligned crystal delirium. That which de the, 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 that formed the meteor that destroyed Drakenheim. So before you, if we show, uh, I will show our map and you all can, can see it here. Um, so if we're just sizing things up here, you've got a little bit of an embankment where it's a more gentle slope down uh, to the, the water's edge. And then from your best guess, the ship that is before you probably has two decks below it, likely a lower deck and a cargo hold. Um, and the, as I said, the water is probably enough that you would still need to swim, but not deep enough that you would need to, uh, that, that the ship would actually sink in these waters. The cliffs themselves uh, along here are about 30 feet in height. Um, and there is... There is a lifeboat from the ship that has fallen off, um, a, a dingy boat, but it is cast on the shore not as if someone had used it to escape, but more that perhaps when the ship collided, it slid off the upper deck and then onto the, the, be the beach itself rather than someone actually piloted it from the boat proper. Well... Um, I don't even know if I said my character's name. I'm Dr. M.T. Voids. That's... So Dr. M.T. Voids floats towards the wreckage just ever so slightly, and, well, I suppose if we're going to get started, then we better head in, shall we? All right, let's do this thing. Okay. As you, as the three of you each approach the, the vessel, would any of you like to take this opportunity to prepare any of your spells or any of your uh, items or anything of the sort? Well, that's a good question. I mean, you said the water's not too deep. I imagine where, I, I, I don't need to cast water breathing, do I? <laughs> I can swim. The only possibility would be if the lower, if the hold of the ship is flooded. Um, that that it, it's if there is damage to the to the vessel, there is a possibility that the lower the lowest hold of the ship could be com completely submerged. But judging from outside, it's not clear whether or not that's the case yet. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> hmm. I mean, what time of it, it seems dark? I'm assuming the the darkness here is more a product uh, of first the the mood of the map, uh, but it is it is overcast with gray clouds above. Gotcha. Uh, thanks to the the mist. So uh, right now here in Toronto, it's actually such a day where you've got those very dark, deep gray clouds that really do block out the sunlight and make it seem mm. much later in the day than it actually is why don't we say uh for for sake of argument uh that it is three o'clock in the afternoon okay arabella's gonna slap dr jacob grustein on the back and get come on it's time to harvest the harvest Oh, my dear, uh, please, after you. And I sort of uh, step to the side somewhat nervously uh, and okay. gesture. One day you'll be normal. <laughs> Speaking of normal, <laughs> Dr. Voids just floats ahead. Yeah. Okay. Just going to start headed towards the boat. Great. As the three of you head towards the boat, who is leading the way? I think I think Dr. Voids. Okay. Dr. Voids, uh, without hesitation, just starts floating towards the boat. He's sure that his two comrades are following behind. 
Okay. We have yes. to like step over rocks and stuff. This is yeah. <laughs> I do not bring your shoes feet for We're stepping. trying not to. There's that thing when you're walking down a sandy hill and you're trying not to speed up as you go. Yes, very, Humans. very much. Yeah. Um. Well, Doctor Void, since you are taking the lead, give me a perception check. It's going to be twelve. 12. The waters are rough and choppy. As you approach, you can see the waves washing up against the shore, the, the rocky shoreline. Um, and even as they wash up and down, you surmise now that the water actually could be a little bit deeper than you might have first thought approaching. And now with, with being a little bit closer, it would probably, it, if only a few feet out from the shore, the water looks like it gets quite deep pretty quickly, enough that you would probably be up to your head or neck in, in the, if you were to step away, step only about maybe 15 feet off the shoreline. Well, the obvious solution, friends, is we'll simply float onto the hull of the boat using our superior intellects. Okay. Um... Remember that that conversation that we had about human biology? Have you? But you are the two smartest individuals I know. Have you not unlocked your mind to the powers of flight? No, funnily enough, uh, <laughs> we have. Well, I haven't. Have you, Arabella? Because I'm uh, no flight here, unfortunately. Um, no, perhaps this, this, this boat, we could use this dinghy here. Uh, and just uh, row ourselves across. Um, row, I, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, man made tools before he floated. Uh, and <laughs> and shall we not use those tools to our best advantage, Dr. Voids? We are quite skilled at using tools, are we not? So I suppose we will use what's at our disposal to get to the boat using a smaller boat. And While they're having this exchange, can I just give the boat the the dinghy a once over to see if it's in ship shape? Yeah, as it were. Did you want to approach uh, uh, approach it physically? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, let me, yeah, let me move myself down. We. I'll float along as right. I'm having this conversation about smaller boats and bigger boats and <laughs> Arabella <laughs> Ushka boat. If I could get an investigation check from you, certainly. The moment that I find a d twenty and my bonus. Uh, investigation. Oh, that's good. That's good. 14. The boat, though it's quite banged up, is serviceable enough to, to, to cover this short distance. Um, as you, uh, as you look around the, the rest of the, the, the boat itself, the oars are noticeably absent from it, um, but they're is a bit of uh, rough driftwood that you could probably repurpose just enough to to push push off. However, style. as you examine the boat, from the corner of your eye, you notice the movement of perhaps some large fish in the water off off the shore, perhaps about in this this area. Um, Oddly, the movement that you see is that of perhaps a, a large fish just floating near the surface. Though with the mist and the, the drizzle of the rain, you'd be forgiven for missing it for a moment. But you catch sight of it. Against my better judgment, <laughs> I'm going to creep on closer. See if I can get a better look at that there fish. Okay. As you creep closer to the creature, for creature is the best term to surmise it, treading near the surface of the water in this deeper section on the other side of the boat, you can see a visage that is almost like a cross between a fish and a person's face. 
the eyes are widely separated apart the lips are wide and stretched the nostrils and nose have uh, have sort of receded away into the the sort of the bulbous head of this being but you can see that those are not fins but arms that are swimming treading in in the water uh, be, beneath the water uh, beneath the waves there and there may be more than one nearby i'm gonna back up <laughs> and call over um dr grustein well, i rather I think that this, the, yeah i i rather yes. think that this might be your expertise rather than mine Oh, well, I'm not much of a sailor, but I'll take a look, I suppose. Not the boat, you ninny. <laughs> not the boat. Oh, uh, have you found another mode of transport? I'm going to point out the area under the water that I'm, that I'm looking at. There Where is you the see a fish person. As our local oh. mutagenist, I would suggest you would be the expert in such... Uh, Fish person, you say? Would I uh, assume to know what this creature is, or perhaps have heard of? of like, like, am I am I assuming this is a creature, or was once a person that has found themselves a creature as a result mm. of mutation? Well, um, you can give me the hire of Arcana or Nature. Um, I believe I'm proficient in both. So let me have a quick look. Um. Let's go, uh, Ar let's go Arcana because I think I'm trying to gauge mm. specifically whether this has there's mutation happening here. Oh, um, well, it's dark and rainy, uh, and I can't quite see it because that was a one uh, <laughs> for a total of eight, if that matters. Okay, um, but, uh, it but is, yes, it but is enough for you to determine that this is not a natural creature. Well, I've never seen one of those before. Uh, I don't suppose many fishermen turn up with them in their boats, so be on alert. I'm going to float over the water a little bit and look downwards as I hover above the waves, um, trying to assess if there are multiple moving creatures beneath the surface or if we... I, I'm just, I'm floating above the water looking down to see what I can see. Well, you look down, and beneath the waves, indeed, there are three more. Oh no. <laughs> it seems that there are many of these fish persons, but they seem of pathetic intellect, and I would say they probably won't be must, much of an issue for us. If we uh, just ignore them, they will probably ignore us. You know what? You're right. We shouldn't lower ourselves to engaging with them. The boat is looking really good now. Uh, 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 I mean, he assumes we're below his intellect. Do we really trust his judgment of fish folk? I, we're the only people that he values the intellect. The only ones. Uh, very well. Um, Look, I will take it. I'm above the fish folk. Great. Great for me. Good. Good. All right. Very well. I, I shall trust your judgment in this, Arabella. Okay. I'm going to start prepping the boat and getting that uh, driftwood gondola stick. <laughs> Nervously aid her. Uh, but looking like sort of, you know, while I'm pushing the boat out into the water or whatever it is I happen to be doing, sort of like very distractedly, worriedly glancing down into the water and then uh, going back to what I'm doing and glance again. As, uh, as you do, one of the, the deep creatures surfaces from the water and it speaks in a blubbering voice. Land walkers! This is our prize. As it raises a spear towards you. By the old Can gods, I it has the capacity to speak words. This is phenomenal. Can I ask a, a question? And this is sort of a, a bit of a meta question because yeah. I, I had access to a couple of languages 
Um, and so sort of taking a bit of a guess here at what haze creatures or, or mutated creatures might speak, I took deep speech as a as one of the languages. Okay. Is, there, is it fair for me to assume these things might speak that or is that a bit beyond what Grustein would necessarily assume? At that is point? a completely fair assumption to, to, to try, um, certainly. Um, as, as he speaks common to me, um, presumably, um, I, I sort of, uh, worriedly tap my fingers on top of my knuckles and then step forward and go, hello, um, didn't mean to interrupt and just like swap kind of as best I can into a uh, deep speech, probably mispronouncing most things. Um, but just sort of saying, um, uh, this is a prize that could be shared by all. We're just mm. here to take a look. There is a look of surprise that washes over the, you detect almost the what remains of the human-like features in these deep ones as they hear the, you speak the deep speech. And one, uh, um, and one of them turns to the other um, and says, and then replies to you in the deep speech, which means you must speak to Molpe the priest. You know the true tongue. Well, I took a course. Uh <laughs> I say jokingly, sort of. Uh, uh, I, I relay that uh, to my companions. Um, I, I ask in deep speech, um, uh, Mope, was it? Mope. Um, Mope. Um, the, you know, I kind of ask if they're in the boat um, and then relay to my companions. They actually seem oddly friendly. You're communicating with them using their inferior tongue i i'm impressed jacob arabella's <laughs> just looking so at you low. warily she's got a hand on something on her hip but i'm still yeah i'm still floating there while they're like pointing spears at me and i'm just like ignoring them there she one of the deep ones dives back beneath the water and swims away and the other turns back and says Mope will see if you are worthy to share in our prize. Worthy? Uh, my apologies. Yes, yes. Uh, go to your deity or, or leader or whatever they may be and uh, see if we're deemed worthy. Just in hushed tones, I'm saying to Jacob, we don't need to share. We need what's in that wreck. Certainly I, more than they do. I, at this point, I, I, I assume if I've been working with my comrades long enough, uh, they would expect this coming. Uh, Dr. Voids puts two fingers to his temple, and all of a sudden, Dr. Voids' voice is in your heads, and we can all communicate telepathically. This is an alienist ability, um, metaphysical tether. So we all have the ability to communicate as long as we are within 100 feet of each other. And I have the unique ability to see and hear through either of you at any point, um, if I so choose. Uh, so that yeah, is a, a feature of the, uh, the alienist. And in your heads, you hear me say, oh, we have no plans to uh, make a deal with these fish we will take what we came for and be gone before Ooh. before they even know. Well, a they short, didn't hear that. A short moment passes, and there is a rough clamoring that you that you hear of something bashing along the opposite side of the ve the vessel. A hulking figure with the head of a hammerhead shark lifts itself up over the edge of the deck onto the deck of the ship 
it is wearing pieces of coral-like armor, and it carries a shield made of the wheel of a ship, uh, and a ma- and a halberd built from a salvaged anchor. And as it does so, the end of the anchor, there's a chain, and it begins pulling up the end of the anchor, and on the anchor is a lithe and almost eel-like deep one, um, whose form has several fins stretching down their neck and along, along their body, and carries with them a wand tipped with a delirium crystal. Um, the eel-like le- leader sa- says, I am Mope. Which one of you is the one that speaks the deep language? Oh, you big guy. <laughs> Not yet. Uh, sort of step <laughs> forward. Um, uh, uh, Hello! I am the one that speaks the deep one language. How is it that I am able to prove the worthiness of myself and my worthy companions? Mope eyes you, um, their eyes darting across your, your body, and reaches down and produces and looks across you and says, There is something about you. That is changed. Something in your blood and bones, is there not? Uh, uh, very perceptive of you. You impressed me with your ability to see beyond what is physically in front of you. Reaching into a satchel made of algae, the Mope produces a vial made of seashells that bubbles forward with a thick, viscous liquid and reaches out and says, Do you wish to change more? Oh my goodness. Can I uh, just, is there any chance that I can tell what that viscous liquid is? Looking, uh, um, looking from here, it's difficult to gauge visually what it might be. But you are a chemist and an expert in in, in such things, so why don't you give me um, a, a um, either give me investigation or nature, whatever has your highest bonus. Ooh, actually, they both have the same bonus. So let's call this investigation because I think that that sounds fun. That is an 18. Looking from here, the way the liquid bubbles and hisses and the sound of it sloshing, you surmise that it might be the gathered mucus of some kind of mollusk that has been infused with arcane energy. Okay. Uh... I'm not gonna like grab and hold you or anything, but I'll just reach out and just like circle yeah, my fingers I'm around very, your wrist, and I'll I'm just very, be like, "Be wary!" Like, <laughs> and yeah, and, and I'm, I'm gonna hold my fingers up so we can communicate telepathically with each other. And uh, in Jacob's head, I say, "I I know you're one for a, um, consuming strange fluids on the regular, but." I would maybe not this one. <laughs> suggest against this one. Yes, yes, no, no doubt. Um, as a chemist, generally, I do recommend against that as a whole. But you do just... <laughs> do we want that though? I mean, I'm not going to drink it. But are you curious? I, I ask Arabella. I am always curious. If we could well, get a sample. Well. Uh, let me just um let me just switch uh well oh, actually oh, what 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 do you think we should do should i try to convince him to hand it over and and perhaps we then throw down or do we want to try wrestle it maybe i get it first if i can 
and then we we throw down if they're not happy with me refusing their delicious mead. Love that plan. <laughs> okay. Uh, I turn back and say, but of course, change is but my nature, and change is on us like the seasons. I will, of course, imbibe your delicious, delicious decoction. Molpe has the large hammerhead shark lower them down to the water's edge and says, Very well. Step into the waters, drink of this potion, and become like us, chosen of the deep. Didn't really want to get wet today, but <laughs> very well. I'm just going to, as, as he's moving forward, I just want to get ready, just, uh, just <laughs> touching one of the metal cylinders that's sort of under my coat at the back, just, just preparing for the moment that it's in his hand. Um, I'm mentally preparing. Yeah. <laughs> one of the other fish folk swims forward, the deep ones, and the two deep ones move to take your arms and hold you. Ooh. <laughs> um, <laughs> do we go early? Do we go deep. early? Do we go early? <laughs> I, I, I hold out my hand towards them and yell, stop. And I look to the, the uh, mope and I'm going to cast Suggestion. Okay. And with my hand and my voice sort of echoes both out loud and in Mope's head, cerebral, in, in, through cerebral context. And in the, my casting of suggestion, I say, you will let Dr. Jacob, who stands before you, take the potion as he wishes to. You will hand it over. Okay. Well, I get, uh, this is a wisdom saving throw. Um, yes. I get a 13 on my That is a save. failure. Okay. Um, Molpe says, Very well. You shall join us. Join us. And the other Deep Ones begins chanting, Join us. Join us. Join us. And Molpe passes the bubbling liquid to you, uh, Dr. Grustin. I... Sorry, go ahead, Arabella. I was just going to say, as soon as it's in your hand, <laughs> I'm going to pull out one of the cylinders, click something, <laughs> there's this hissing noise. As gas starts to pour out, I pull up my respirator <laughs> mask, and I basically... Um, I fear gas. <laughs> Anyone within 30 feet... Uh, it's a it's a thirty foot cone. I'm casting fear. Okay, so with with all that in mind, um, we will roll for initiative and uh, and ta and start putting in that one in order. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Spoiling for a fight over here. <laughs> oh, it is not a good initiative roll. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing we all have pretty like. Does anybody have good initiative? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no physical stats. I need con, but otherwise... These fish are going to wail on us just for a little bit. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's, they don't know that we... I mean, you did... If you're clicking, we'll see. We'll see. We'll I don't see. know. We'll All right. Know Arabella, what do we have for initiative? Three. <laughs> Ooh, okay. So what we're going to say there as, is the click of your device as you reach to pull it out is audible and it just that is the thing that gets everybody realizing that something is going to going to go down um I, i'm not going to grant surprise to either side in in this case so if you change your mind when it gets around to your turn we'll see but that that'll we'll take that as the instigation point um mm -hmm. and uh dr Gristine. Uh, i got a nine okay <laughs> That's good or bad, judging by that reaction. Uh. And Dr. Voids. Oh, I got a five. Okay. Squad. <laughs> Didn't expect to be the, the most dexterous here. Oh, 
no. I expected more initiative out of the Guild of Conscientious Practice and Scientific Discovery. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As um as the well the, the Molpe is the first to act, but Molpe was going to do something else anyways. And as the click happens, you see Molpe encanting a spell. This is one of our new spells. Summon Delirium oh no. Elemental. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> cool. Oh no! Sounds like a good time. <laughs> um, and Molpe is going to summon a animated Delirium Sludge out of the water. So Molpe in- encants over a Delirium Crystal that, uh, that they're holding and as the crystal crumbles into the water um the the a thick sludge of contaminated energy coalesces and forms up as if it was going to embrace Dr. Grustein as part of whatever transformation that he might have undertaken uh and so that will be Molpe's turn um with uh with this um next up in uh, our order will actually be Dr. Grustein though Unbelievable. Okay. Yeah, yeah, bad rolls. What was yours, nine? <laughs> yeah, nine. I, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, Dr. Grustein, realizing he's in a bit of trouble here, kind of like looking at the fish folk uh, around him, has some quip to the effect of, well, you wanted to see me change? Time to see me change. Uh, and I sort of like quickly take off my glasses, um, put them in a, a pocket or something, and then like hold my breath and dip below the water, uh, putting a, a, a hand over my nose and then the water begins to kind of like move and roil and there's like sounds of like breaking uh, bones and tearing and reforming flesh, um, tearing clothes as well, no doubt, uh, as doctor or as something kind of emerges out from the water, exploding upwards, um, vaguely looking like Dr. Grustein with like bone spurs coming off of it and just like lightning within clouds. You can see uh, sort of purple light um, echoing inside the muscles of this huge creature as it comes roaring (laughs) out from beneath the water, um, kind of flailing at everything around it. that's my action to, to, to do that transformation. I'm going to using my uh, diagnosis uh, uh, theory, um, I, I suppose, like distract the elemental um, uh, to give adva- to, to do the help action for anybody who's going to attack the elemental. I didn't think that. Okay, so you can actually <laughs> use diagnosis while you're transformed. That's so. <laughs> I was like, well, I got to do something with my this action on the turn I transform. Excellent scientific so. discovery. Yes, this yeah. is a great. <laughs> what a great combo! Love it. All right, Doctor Christine, uh, with your horrific transformation complete, you 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 see uh, one of the fish folk, um, lo- uh, one of the the deep ones, looks over at Molpe and be like, "That wasn't what was supposed to happen, was it?" <laughs> <laughs> um, and with that. Seeing the transformation, the massive hammer-headed deep knight sees a worthy foe and leaps down from uh from in into the water um onto the shoreline and bringing its harpoon towards you it will attack. Um and I get a uh, 18 to hit. With, with That is going... Yeah, that is going to hit. Okay, so the harpoon will inflict 11 points of damage um, to, okay. to you, Dr. Grusin. Um And as it r- pulls you in with its harpoon, it bites down uh, with its, its shark maw. Um, this one is going to be a 16 to hit. That does not hit the hide of the... 
the beast too tough for it to be able to bite through. Um, also with that first attack, uh, Grustein, having experimented terribly upon himself, uh, has turned his blood to acid uh, <laughs> or, or made it noxious with his uh, experimentation. So the creature should take a D6 uh, plus my uh, intelligence modifier, I believe. Um, let me just, I'm not sure what the, the damage type is off the top of my head though. I believe maybe it's acid. It or... is acid. Yeah. Yeah. With, sure. so with that... the mutagenis, this is just an interesting question because when you mutate your intelligence and strength modifiers get swapped. Oh, that's, that's does, a very good point. Uh, does that yeah. affect noxious blood? I think that, that, I think it's too cool for noxious blood to be nerfed when you transform. So I, I agree. I, I think that maybe we should put an exception in, in there that says, like, if you're a mutagenist, you use your strength modifier. Yeah, I think that's too cool not to... to good note, good yeah, note. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, in that case, it's six points uh, of acid damage dealt back to the... The breaker. acid sprays across the, cre the creature as it raises its shield too late, uh, and in response, it bashes back at you with its shield, uh, only getting a nine to hit. <laughs> Okay. Nevertheless, you can feel that the, this creature is exerting that defensive posture, and that getting away from it would be extremely difficult. With that, um, the our fish folk, uh, mm. our deep ones, seeing that uh, um, Arabella is pulling something. These two fish one fish folk are going to swim around Doctor Voids and come right for Arabella. Um, may, and they one brings out a net uh, and throw uh, and throws it at you. Um, ooh, wow. Okay, that's an eighteen on the die, so that's going to be ooh. a twenty-one to hit. So. <laughs> Oh, you it's, know, let me just check whether oh yeah. <laughs> it's no damage, um, but you are restrained until you break out of the net. The other deep drag has a fun feature though called catch of the day. That um a they will deal extra damage to a prone or restrained creature they hit with an attack. Oh. So let's see if I hit. Um I'm actually only gonna get a 14 to hit. I think that that just hits okay oh, well in this case with the spear then um it is going to be a total of 11 piercing damage well you know what though the good news is that um you know it, dr grustein has his acid blood i have my bandolier of random chemicals as uh they hit me one of those shatters and splashes out <laughs> and <laughs> uh deals what is that let me see we've just we've literally just done it. it's 1d6 plus okay no, 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 no. these fish people are gonna regret attacking <laughs> what nine, are we doing? that's uh that's nine poison damage uh and i took how much uh you took 11 so Ooh. as they as the spear um collides with you it shatters one of your vials which explodes violently back at the fish folk corroding away its face and it dies <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's really gross <laughs> um <laughs> and i have two more um and i think both of them are going to also attack um dr grustein with their spears getting a natural one and a 16 to hit So I think those are both going to miss you, Dr. Christine. Oh, sorry, me. Yes, yeah. they yeah. both. Uh, yes, they will. My apologies. Dr. Voids, then. We're over to you. Dr. Voids, Woo! still hovering above the water, actually lifts 15 more feet in the air and looks down at the battle that is ensuing. And it's like, these creatures, they're probably very susceptible to disease, aren't they? And I open up my coat and using my mind, a flower drifts out of my coat and I suck the energy and essence of the flower out, holding my hands above my head and raining pestilence down upon the battlefield. I am casting one of our new spells. Uh, this is probably one of the deadliest new spells, I think, uh, for third level, Pestilence. 
I am going to infect up to six creatures I can see within range, which is all of the baddies. Uh -oh. um, thank you for killing one of them because I was like, oh, who am I going to leave out? <laughs> but now I don't have to. Um, so basically, as I absorb the energy of the flower, the flower wilts and dies. And I shoot the toxic energy towards all the creatures infecting them. Uh, at the start of each of their turns, that's all of them, they must make a constitution saving throw. On a failed saving throw, they take 3d6 necrotic damage and gain one level of exhaustion. If the target succeeds on three of these saves, the spell ends for that creature. Okay, brutal. Okay, so Range is on. I don't make saves for that until the start of their turns, correct? Until the start of their turns, okay. yes. Okay. So I, I soar into the air and infect all the creatures with this disease. So also, for those of you who have bacterial barrage, which I believe is all of us, uh, they're all diseased now as well. Awesome. And But if I save, it's it's not half damage. It, it's, it's all or nothing for the save, correct? Like, it's no half damage. Yeah, on a yeah. failed saving throw, the creature takes okay. 3d6 necrotic damage, and they have to save 3 to get rid of it, but they don't take any damage if they yeah. save. Okay. And the exhaustion goes away when the spell ends, though. Yeah. Uh, when the spell ends on the creature, yeah, go away. Okay. Um, anything else, Dr. Voids? Uh, I think that's going to be it. Okay. Arabella, it is your turn. All right. I have some questions. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. So what do I do? What do I need to do to get out of this net? Um, you need, um, it is similar to being grappled. Um, so mm -hmm. you could either cut the net with a sharp weapon, uh, or you could use your action to um, escape from, from the net. So you can use an action to make a strength or dexterity check to free yourself, uh, or you can uh, actually attack and damage the net to cut your way free. Okay. All right. Okay. And just, I mean, just as an alternative, I mean, uh, what's the situation if I try to try to attack through the net? I'm imagining that that, Either does it work or comes with disadvantage. You you're restrained, so you have a disadvantage on attack oh, rolls. Dang, I forgot I was restrained. Okay, uh, yeah. Um, and can't move from your space, but you can still cast spells and attack normally. Just if you do make an attack roll, it would be with disadvantage. Okay, I am gonna stay in my net for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Safety net. I feel comfy. I feel secure. Um, so I am going to, uh. I, I think I, okay. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out. Um, it almost looks like a little incense stick, and just light it from where I am inside the net, and uh, basically cast bacterial barrage. Okay. Um, and the smoke from the incense uh, is sort of an emetic that makes nausea worse. Is my thinking. Nice. So, let's see. Disadvantage here. Where's a second D twenty? Uh, which, yeah. Who would you like to target? Oh, the dude right in front of me. Okay, great. All right. Um, so that is something big. Where's my... I keep putting my character sheet in the worst place possible. That is an 18 to hit. With disadvantage. Uh, that is a hit. Wow. Good stuff. Yeah. yeah, it was an 11 and an 18. Oh, no, a 19. So there you go. Um, do, 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 do. So it's uh, 2d12 because he's diseased, right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, for those of you listening along, Bacterial Barrage uh, does 1d8 necrotic damage to the target, but if they are diseased or poisoned, it does 1d12. Or in this case, once you reach fifth level, 2d12 because yeah. uh, it's a cantrip. Oh, thank goodness it was 2d12 because I rolled really badly for damage. Uh, five damage. <laughs> Oh, Five necrotic damage. <laughs> oh, oh, you can see the creature sicken um, from the uh, f from the spell, um, but uh, it's not enough to to sl for it to be overcome by the sickness. <laughs> Just die. <laughs> That's the end of my turn. Very well. Well, at the top of the round, um, I am. Oh, I just hit the back button on my browser by mistake. Give me a moment. Um, there is a sound of, of sloshing and surfing as several more deep ones um, oh no. walk, uh, oh. Uh, uh, arrive on the shore, um, leaping up uh, over the rocks, um, and I will just put them on 
token layer, and then I'll put them where I need them to go. And here I thought I got everything with disease. A few more of them showing up uh, to so help help their allies out. Um, but uh, it is Molpe's turn. So you really should have got to this ship sooner, dang. <laughs> well, seeing this situation here, seeing quite the the, the brute, um, Molpe um, is going to cast a spell of their own. First, they're going to make a saving throw. Con? Oh, I get a natural yeah. one. Awesome. So that's going to be a 3d6 necrotic damage and one level of exhaustion. Okay. Roll it for me. That's going to be 12 damage. Okay. Well, um, I think in this case, because you are all in range of this, this will be my opportunity for Molpe to um, sing a song in deep speech. This is their discordant song. And I need all of you to give me a oh, no. intelligence saving throw. Oh, good. <laughs> if anybody fails, I have an ability for that. Yeah. What do we got? 22. Okay. I got a 28. Oh. I got a 14. Okay. Unfortunately, uh, um... Uh, Dr. Gristein, you have failed the saving throw. I uh, am going to use my esoteric theory, Vital Signs. When a creature you can see within 30 feet of you fails a saving throw or death saving throw, you can use your reaction to add your intelligence modifier to the creature's roll. Um, I must finish a short rest before I can use this theory on the same creature again, so I'm going to add 5 to your roll. Okay, so in that uh, case, you 19. all succeed. So in, in this case, you're you, like, remember who you are, Groot yeah. Time. <laughs> I, in your head, I'm like, you're better than this, Doctor. <laughs> Jacob, snap out of it. I know you're a monster right now, but you're still in there somewhere, and I know you're a man of intelligence. Don't fall victim to this silly, trivial song. <sighs> you all too. still do take 10 points of psychic damage, but fortunately you've all avoided the effect that will cause you to reduce your attack rolls and saving throws by 1d6 for the next minute. Oh, good. Ah, uh, I thought that would have been useful. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, so, um, and now my summoned uh, Delirium Elemental. Um, well, where is my spell? Also need a con save from that Elemental. Uh, I do indeed. I just need to find my stat block. Oh, it's in the contaminated spells section. That's why it's not in the same section as the others. Okay. So, um, actually, as an elemental creature, oh no, I don't think I have given it immunity to disease. So we'll we'll, we'll have it work normally. Um, it does, however, get a 16 on its saving throw. Uh, yep, my DC is 16. Okay. Good job, Elemental. Okay, so um, it's going to come for, for you, Dr. Voids. Um, it is going to use its Grasping Tide ability. Uh, to... I am 15 feet in the air. Um, it probably can reach me, though. Yeah, it can. It's, it's got reach, and it's a large creature, so I'm going to say it's, it's tall enough to get you. It's grabbing my feet. Um, it is going to get a 16 to hit. Uh, that'll hit. Okay, um, so that is going to be a grand total of um, 17 bludgeoning damage, uh, and you are grappled by the, um, by, by the creature. I am going to use one of my psychic points to reduce that damage by 10. Okay. Only taking seven. So as it lashes out at me, I like force it back with my with my mental powers, uh, but it still manages to grab my foot. Okay, it makes a second attack that misses, um, um, but you are grappled um, and thus held by the uh, by the grasping tide of the animated sludge. Mm. Um, and so that is Molpe's turn, Doctor Gristine, We're over to you. Oh. Hurt void. 
Uh, and I try to I start just punching the elemental um, uh, first uh, fist attack. Uh, is going to be a 23, 22. Uh, that will hit the elemental for sure. Yeah. Cool. All right. Strap yourselves in. Here come 5d6. Oh. Uh, a d6 plus uh, one for each level of the spell that was used to transform. Um, so that's going to be... Uh, that is that amount. I actually have to re-roll one of my D6. I only have four. Uh, ooh, that's going to be that, which is going to put it up to that, which is going to be 23 points of, uh, I believe, bludgeoning. But let me just double check that it doesn't change to a different type of damage. Um, da -da 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 -da, mutagenist. Actually, Monty, you might know off the top of your head. Do you know if it's bludgeoning it, it or does should it change be, to force? Sh should be bludgeoning damage, yep. Okay, cool. No problem. Um, and so that's the first attack for, what did I say, 23 points of damage. Nice. And then the second attack. Uh, ooh, that's not as good. That's going to be a, a 13 to hit. Uh, unfortunately, the, the punch kind of goes right through the watery form of the creature <laughs> cool um and then using my bonus action once again to help anybody uh who's attacking the elemental as i punch it so hard <laughs> it's distracted um by all the hard punching nice 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 <laughs> um dr voids actually need a concentration check from you from the damage that you took before Oh, yes, of course. Uh, so it ended up being 7 damage instead of yeah, 17. Yeah, so it's just, just a basic DC 10 check. Uh, that's going to be... A 19. Okay, so you're still still concentrating. All right, so the Deep Knight uh, coming to their turn. I do have to make a saving throw against the spell, which I fail. Ah, so that's a level of exhaustion for the Deep Knight. Okay. Yay! And 15 damage. Okay. Was this all pestilence? This is so nasty. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. 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 I, I think we might have to reduce the number of targets it hits pestilence. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> as a right player, now, it feels good. Right now, I really good. like it as is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, the Deep Knight um, is going to... Um, seeing that... Dr. Voids is responsible for the sickness. The Deep Knight takes its harpoon and hurls it at Dr. Voids. Oh no. Uh, getting a 25 to hit. Yeah, that's gonna hit. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be 15 points of piercing damage, Dr. Voids. Oh man, I think I'm gonna the use another. This moment is so cool. I'm being held by a water elemental flying in the air. It hurls. Uh, I'm going to again try to get my mental power to. I slow the harpoon down. I'm gonna use another mental uh, psychic point. W weren't you um, saying that these psychic points were not that good? Uh, no, before? I was <laughs> saying that I need more of them because uh, I'm I'm down to one. Uh, so I get three per short, I, I okay. get an amount equal to my uh, proficiency bonus. And I'm theorizing as a play tester that I want twice my proficiency bonus, but that might be me being a greedy player. But I reduce the damage by 10, uh, meaning that I only take five damage. Okay. I also need a strength saving throw uh, from oh, you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, that was a cock die. Do you accept an, uh, a 17? Ah, okay. So you don't get reeled in. <laughs> um, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Um, so in this case, uh, the the remaining attacks from um, the the Deep Knight are going to go over onto uh, Dr. Grustein. So it's going to bite Dr. Grustein, getting an 18 to hit. That and hit. a 22 for the shield bash. Both so both uh, each attack does ten points of damage. Um, okay. One is bludgeoning, one is uh, uh, piercing, and I actually need a strength save, or you're going to be knocked prone. Okay. Uh, oh yeah. Just my health there. 
strength save will be sorry okay i have a dice tray here so um that's why Good stuff. if you see me re-roll it's just because i didn't go in the tray uh 20 natural okay you are not four. knocked prone by the the oh. the deep knight um and so uh i have now my remaining um uh acid blood acid blood right toxic blood acid noxious blood, blood. Acid blood. It's like the the chant oh, yeah. of our yeah. guild. <laughs> uh, okay, so assuming that uh, I still add my original intelligence yep. bonus to this, that will be eight points uh, of acid damage. That leaves me bloodied, actually. I just Ooh, really nice. like the idea of us going, who are we? The Guild of Conscientious Practice and Scientific Discovery. What do we want? Acid blood. <laughs> 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 that's our that's our motto that's our day one like that's what you chant <laughs> yeah when you get a role in our in our institute okay well uh with that i just have my fish my remaining fish folk three of them have to make constitution saving throws they do one two uh one what's the the dc 16 so one doesn't die um but the other two Almost certainly will roll roll that damage because one was damaged by uh, by Arabella before, and it failed at save. Well, I hope this kills them. Uh, that was not the best roll. That's seven damage oh. to one. Okay, well uh, that that does kill the one that was damaged by Arabella's acid blood. Uh, okay, it's it's the same roll for all of them though. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Um. So. That does wound them, but it actually doesn't slay them um, in this case. So Yeah, I rolled two twos and a three. Well, in that case, um, these two are going to throw their spears up, um, at you, Dr. Voids, um, because they will get to use their catch of the day uh, mm -hmm. to deal extra damage to you, but the spears both go wide. Uh -huh. um, and I think the remainder are all going to pile in on this monstrosity. Um, and I'm looking for to hit AC 18? 17 is the 17. AC. Okay, so I get a critical hit and one regular hit. Uh, so that's going to be a total of 15 points of damage from the two hits. Okay, does how many times does acid blood trigger? Is, is that once per I think it's once I don't think it's a reaction. Yeah, I think it might be each time. Is it each time? Is that what we have? The way we wrote it, when a creature hits you with a melee attack while within five feet of you, it takes poison damage equal to one D six plus your intelligence modifier. This is noxious blood. This is oh, an esoteric is... theory that all three of us have taken. Interesting. Okay, let let's <laughs> let's play it that way this time, because I might have just blown up all my fishies. <laughs> all right let's see that noxious blood oh sorry i need to roll damage yeah uh oh not that much five points of acid damage uh that will actually be enough to slay the two that have been damaged by the disease before <laughs> um so there we go good good play getting a real starship troopers vibe here of like yeah. getting melted by the the blood of the big Big oh bugs. yeah just sprang out oh, yeah it's actually really cool for the mutagenus to have the acid blood I, I love the image of that too it feels like another mutation dr mm. voids it is your turn sir all right well i'm being grappled and held on to by water um so i am going to eldritch blast the water <laughs> all right uh so my first eldritch blast eldritch blast is a cantrip that the alienist has access to um and so, 21 to hit. It is a hit. And my second blast, I assume I'm going to just shoot it twice, uh, is also going to be a hit. So, palpable hit. All right, that is uh, uh, nine damage from one and five damage from the other. So as the deep ones pile around uh, Dr. Grustein and spews of no noxious blood cause them to sort of melt away into these fish-like guts all over the waters, you start firing the, the Eldritch Blast towards the, the elemental that is grabbing you. It's contaminated form pulling away at your leg, uh, but... Uh, 
while you do damage it, it is still uh, still holding itself together. Yeah. I'm uh, trying to fly against it, but I can't. I cannot get out. Actually, you know, you know what? Let's use my let's use my final psychic point <gasps> to do five extra damage. Okay, all in. all in. It it does leave the elemental muddied. We'll go with muddied instead of bloodied. <laughs> ah, ah, I like it. <laughs> um, as a result of that, uh, but it is still keeping its form together. All right, all right, all right. Okay. With that, Arabella, we're over to you. All right. <laughs> now that this uh, fish beside me uh, has blown up, um, I am going to sort of mutter to myself about wanting to use more sophisticated techniques this time as I um, light a fuse on what is, I'll be honest, basically a Molotov cocktail <laughs> and lob it. <laughs> Through the net in the direction of uh, this whole squad of peeps over here. Now, let me let me see if I can. I don't. This is look. I've drawn my circle from the wrong spot, uh, and now I don't know how to get rid of it. So that's your problem now, Monty. Um, but basically, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Centered from here, I'm casting fireball. Oh, there um, it is. Okay, okay. Don't worry, I Boom. I got this for you. And I, the chemist can shape it right around their I allies. I can. Yes. Yeah, I have I have a wonderful ability <laughs> called precise application, which means that I can choose a number of creatures up to my intelligence modifier to um to not be not be blown up. So that's well, they they automatically succeed on saves, and if they would take half damage on a save, then they take no damage, um, which is great. Oh, I love that. We can get even more. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so i mean obviously dr grushtein and, and dr voids uh my choice of um not getting blown up and you also have to tell me if anyone um crit fails their saving throw oh right i okay yeah. let's see so uh we'll we'll start with the fried fish all right um that's a crit fail <laughs> Yes, because uh, for the people at home, I have another ability called, uh, what, what is it called? It's called Critical Condition, which is basically if a target rolls a one on a spell save, then at that would deal damage, then they take critical damage. Okay. So that is very nice. So so we might be having Fried Shark, because uh, that was the that was the, the Deep Knight um, that rolled the natural one. The two, uh, the two fish succeed, uh, be, beneath him succeeded their saves. The last fish fails, uh, and um, Molpe fails, and the uh, animated delirium sludge actually does succeed the save. So uh, the two the two big ones failed their save. Um, what do we got for the uh, the critical the critical condition on a fireball? What do we All got? Right. Here's here's what I'm gonna do because I don't I need more d sixes right now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see how many am I holding. I'm holding six. I need three more because this is level four. <laughs> so there's one. There's, uh, there's another one there. <laughs> there's, I just need one more. This is so many dice to roll a crit on. <laughs> there's another one. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. All right. Okay. Hoo <laughs> I hope you could all hear that at home. All right. Okay. So... <laughs> For general damage, we've got, uh, I'm doing maths right now, so that's 10. That is 20. That is 29 for the base damage. Okay. And then for the crit, because I get to roll all these dice again. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Okay. that's This is quite a lot. Um, there's 10. There's 20. There's 36. Um, so the only <laughs> creatures that are still, the only creature that is left standing by that is Molpe. So what, what do you imagine just occurred? What happened to these other creatures? <laughs> what did happen? Okay. So let's see. Y'all are over there in the thick of things. I can see a gigantic Dr. Grustein. I can see floating Dr. Voids being uh, harried by by a delirium elemental. Um, I'm in a net. <laughs> <laughs> 
And I basically, I, we must have like a code word or something that I basically shout as I'm lobbing this, this, my little hand comes out between this, this net and lobs this Molotov cocktail uh, in your direction. I, I imagine I shout something like duck and cover. And For the GCPSD. Just, yeah, for the GCPSD. <laughs> and you two just know by now that that's the sign to, to you know. I, I put like a mental it. shield around me and Dr. <gasps> uh, Gershin to block us from the flames that are about to happen. Yeah. I love that. And uh, what I imagine happens to all the bad guys is that I um, have included Fraxinella oil in the uh, the concoction and it basically sticks to everyone. So they get blasted with the fire and then the fire sticks to them and they can't put it out. That's <laughs> And then they burn to death. That's grisly. That's, and, and, and they're right above the water surface. Their, their, their last action is trying to dive beneath the surface against the flames. You know, like, like a gasoline fire too, how like it will like just stay on top of the water and still burn underneath. Yeah, it's 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 not a pleasant way to go. The side of the ship might be on fire. I imagine that it's so waterlogged that it doesn't catch under this under these circumstances. But there's still licks of flame that burn along the side of the ship, um, and Molpe um, staggers. Um, parts of uh, parts of their fins burned away uh, by the by the explosion. Um, yeah, they're 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 not looking too good. <laughs> Arabella, that was, that was may I say? Uh, explosive results. Great concoctions. I'm quite impressed. <laughs> Why, thank you, Dr. Boyd. <laughs> Big boom. <laughs> For the folks once again, that was uh, a combination of critical condition and the chemist class. <laughs> nice. Very nice. cool. Well, I think, um, I think given this circumstance, um, Molpe's only option here is to <laughs> um is to try to get out <laughs> uh and try to run uh, well they will with misty step <laughs> god damn <laughs> <laughs> uh misty stepping over to here uh and immediately taking to the waves to swim away um and uh make make a, a, a be a, as best a run for it as as they can um dr grustein it is your turn um, I sort of grasp at the misty step as he goes away. I was hoping to to get hold of that pip squeak, and in kind of frustration, just like look around myself, water splashing around, spot uh, the one fish individual still over here that I can <laughs> see on my map, and just <sighs> just start running uh, straight at them, uh, going. Uh, sorry, let me get my token. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Yeah, I got heaps of movement to get yeah. over there and just try to take. Now, before I describe this, this I want to see fish. if I hit. Oh, no. <laughs> so the first attack uh, is a critical fail uh, okay. with a one. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can get a second attack. <laughs> Uh, second attack will be a 17. I imagine as you trudge through, through the water, um, your hulking form, you kind of stumble, and the first uh, the first fist sort of lands with a splash beside the creature, and it tries mm -hmm. to swim off of the, the, the rippling waves, but it ends up just swimming into your backhand. I'm hoping that uh, if this, and it's 5d6, everybody, thanks to my hulking form, uh, using a fourth level spell slot. This is going to be a lot. Uh, that is 19. I uh, haven't finished yet. Uh, uh, 24 plus strength, 28 points of damage. Oh. Um, so I just like, with the first attack missing, splashing in the water, the second attack is just like a massive footy kick, like football kick, just kicking this <laughs> thing to the moon um, oh, out no. of the water. Well, bye bye. With, with that, Doctor Doctor Voids Arabella, do you want to try anything to prevent Molpe's escape? Uh, if I fly over over here, can I can I see? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to, so I, I, I float over hand to forehead 
and summon my mental powers to blast Mope with uh, two Eldritch Blasts. Okay. First one getting uh, 24. Mm -hmm. And second one uh, critting, or getting a natural 20. Well, I also realized I forgot to roll the saving throw from your spell as well last turn. Right. Um, So I imagine that as the Eldritch Blasts reach out, Molpe succumbs to the pestilence and just flops over over in the water. Disease-ridden and decaying quickly as I blast parts of Molpe off, it dies. (laughs) Well, having... uh, That was amazing uh um amazingly violent well done um and as the water as the the sounds of battle recede to just the slow din of the crashing waves against the shore i think that this is a perfect moment for us to take a 15 minute break Wonderful. and that's what i think of sharing <laughs> arabella flops back in the boat still in the net arm up thumbs up <laughs> awesome all right twitch we'll see you in just a few minutes And we are back from our short rest. We have restocked all of our consumables, spent some hit dice, got our abilities back, ready to focus, you know, focus those key points. uh, And let's play some more D&D. As the... I think we we should begin with uh, Dr. Dr. Grustein. What happens as your transformation ceases? Um... Sort of, you you hear again the breaking bone and the flesh kind of like uh, tearing and then pulling itself back together. You hear a, uh, uh, like I've just like gone for a a, a sixty uh, a sixty meter run. That's not very far, but you know, like a run, <laughs> like a real job. No, that yeah. is that is what I sound like after a sixty meter run. You're accurate. Yeah, it's fine. Exactly. For, for Doctor Jacob Grustein, it's a sixty meter run. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the, yeah, just like, you know, meat, uh, and bone just kind of slawing off almost like I'm taking off this like flesh suit, uh, and Grustein almost emerges, uh, back out of it. I said tearing clothes before. I think rather what happens is instead of his clothes tearing off, almost like attack on Titan, he becomes like encased oh, inside neat. of the, oh. the creature instead. So he emerges and he's like covered in, in, uh, I-Core and, and he's wet because of the water and he's just sort of. Pulls himself back up, faces away, stands very tall, does his top button back up, smooths over his hair, finds his glasses, and then just uh, fits them back on. <sighs> where were we? Welcome back. As an oh, aside, thank you. Attack on Titan is a gr- another great like place where you get inspiration for me to Genesis. We keep finding these these references for this. That's mm. a that's a good one. Um, awesome. C- carry on. <laughs> Uh, thank you. Sorry, I must have passed out for a moment there. Had a bit of a kip. Uh, what? What? Uh, what happened? They're dead. We, we got. Oh, actually, and I sort of like reach into my pocket as if just remembering and pull out the potion uh, and hand it over to Arabella. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm uh, quite pleased that we uh, that we started the Guild of Conscientious Practice and Scientific Discovery between the three of us. Between a mutagenist, an alienist, and a chemist, I think that we are the three greatest investigators and probably the three smartest people in the world. Well, we should probably I'll take the also. <laughs> you sound look like you feel the compliment. Um, we should probably also grab that uh, that wand if we can find it from the uh, the, the guy, the Mope, Mope. Is that what you said, mm. Mope? I, I hover over to the uh, diseased, dead body of Mope and pry the uh, mm. the wand. Yes, up. this is a spell-piercing wand. And by focusing the magic from it, uh, you can use this to neg- negate the magic resistance trait of those that you cast your spells against. Hmm. Um, I toss it over to Arabella and I'm like, bah, I don't need silly sorcerer trinkets. I'm just collecting all the materials. I, I'm, I'm having a field day. This is the best. I cannot wait to sit down with my alchemist supplies and just like 
study every element, mm. find out what what the like primary active elements of each of these things is. Yeah, you imagine that um, you could use the spell piercing wand to act as almost a chemical catalyst in your um, in your experiments. So even though the way we kind of imagine the chemist, you're you're still mixing things manually. You're bringing in this extra catalyst into the the equation, so you can benefit from the magic of the item as part of casting your spells if you want to attune to it and use it for the rest yeah. of the session. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we take a short rest, huh? Why don't we do that? <laughs> nice. I am a little mentally tired. I could use. Um, you did a lot of um, heavy brain lifting. I often do. Great. Um, well, uh, it's as the three of you take a break on the the water's edge, you can feel um, a palpable sense of wrongness around you um, emanating from from the boat itself. Whatever drew these creatures towards the, this ship, there is almost this that that feeling of the ozone against your skin. The smell of the ship and the salt air itself creates this impression that almost as you watch the boat and you watch the waves, there's almost a moment as if you see the water and the ship itself out of phase with one another. Like as if there's just this moment where as the water washes up against the side of the boat, the if it, to to draw a more modern metaphor, it's like the object collision of the boat is not acting properly. So the waves are clipping through the boat itself. What? Um, in and, and even though the boat is completely tangible and corporeal, just the the water doesn't always the it, it looks like the water hits the the boat and then does what the water should do when it hits the boat but maybe three inches away from where you would expect that physical interaction to occur hmm uh as i'm finishing up my short rest can i hover over to where the waves are doing this yeah um the it would be the opposite side of the boat where you can notice the effect most prominently all right i uh, float on over to that side of the boat and uh, begin a careful analysis uh, studying actually uh, I'm going to use my investigative mind feat from Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim, okay. one of our tool feats, um, if you will allow it, yeah. to investigate the boat. Okay. And uh, could you describe a little bit more, more of what that, that you'd like to entail with that investigation? Yes. So using my investigative mind, um, not only do I get uh, sort of in short terms uh, expertise in investigation, uh, but I also get to ask three questions that will either be answered yes, no, or unknown by the dungeon master. Okay. Ask away. Um, does... The waves hitting the side of the boat appear to be um, magic that I have seen and understand before. Yes. Um, is the clipping of the waves uh does it have anything to do with shifting planes of reality yes okay um oh man i wish i could just take a guess at what plane of reality but i feel like that's too that's too risky um i, I already learned a lot of what i wanted to um is it only happening in a specific part of the ship compared to the rest of it? Mm. Is it like obvious that there's just this spot? No. Okay, thank you. That is the new investigative mind feature. Uh, you can take that feat. 
Uh, so I float back to my friends and I'm like, uh, from careful examination of the boat, I do believe we have a plane shift of sorts occurring here. We might be dealing with uh, what some in the area refer to as a thin place, a place where the fabric between planes of existence is fractured, so to speak. And it seems that this boat may be fractured within the planes of reality. Is it likely that our um, fishy fellows came from that other place or that they were attracted here in the water? I think both are likely scenarios. They're either drawn to the plane shift or came through it. It's hard to say. Uh, would, Can- would I know any of that? Um, give me an arcana check. Can I, uh, maybe this is a help action uh, for voids, but uh, what I wanted to do earlier was just sort of like, I think I kind of knew the answer to this, which is why I didn't ask, but maybe it's relevant now. Look at the bodies, the charred remains, kind of pull up an arm and the rest of the body snaps off back into the water. And I'm like, Ugh. Um, uh, just trying to get a closer look at these things to confirm whether I think that they are, um, you know, possibly planar creatures or they were humans that are mutating other humans through use of that potion. Give me a, a nature check or arcana again, up to you. Uh, I got a 28 on my arcana check. Okay. Or sorry, not a 28, uh, 24. Remind me oh, what, only a 24. what your question was again, Kelly? Um, it was, what was my question? Oh man. Uh, it's about it, whether the fish folk came from Right, so I guess we're both studying similar things. Yes, okay. Mm. So the two of you, um, both of you have succeeded. um, And um, what I'll I'll do here is, as you're piecing this evidence together, Arabella, is there anything that you would like to investigate that might give the last piece of the puzzle? Oh, that's a good question. That's a good question, because here I was thinking that I would just be... I, I'm very fixated on the Academy's going to come here and they're going to take control of this wreck mm. and we got to get in and get the stuff before then. So I was thinking that I would be focused on trying to find mm. where the best way into the wreck is. Okay. Uh, but You also then, do have the potion that you scavenged. From, I do have yeah. the potion. That's true. Is there is there any kind of... Um, I don't know, litmus test I can do just to see the composition of the I am sure you have the tools to do that in the field. Absolutely. So why don't we make this a check with your um, with your alchemist supplies? Um, and um, uh, so your proficiency plus your intelligence, I don't know if we, you have expertise in that, but give me a check with those tools. And yeah, do a litmus test on it. Uh, that's an 18. Okay. All three of you succeed. So here's what you can put together. Had you drank that potion, this is these things would have been what you would have transformed into. Um, the this potion appears to be an admixture of trace amounts of delirium with the mucus of some kind of powerful extraplanar creature. Ooh. So, the origin is extra planar but these were people who drank the potion and became the minions to this extra planar entity Mm -hmm. that that's a reasonable conclusion right what the 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 um from what you can piece together so as arabella is looking at the potion and as uh um as dr grustein is examining the uh the bodies these are very clearly people who were mutated into these monstrosities um and under normal circumstances those who are exposed to delirium uh, and and succumb to delirium contamination the nature of their mutations can be wild and and very very inconsistent it can be anything but it seems that the the admixture of the mucus of this extraplanar creature is causing consistency in the forms that are that are are resulting from contamination. This is fascinating. Hmm. 
Good job deducing, <clears throat> team. Sorry, I had to clear my throat then. I had a bit of mutus in my throat. Um, <clears> throat> uh, and dangerous, I should note as well. Um, perhaps there is something we can do here to ensure that nobody's going to accidentally find their way down here and start to chum on some fish stew. Certainly, but I mean, think of the implications, Doctor. Uh, your oh, own I'm research, your own research, the creature that you become. Imagine if you could control that process more, more specifically, guide it in a in a certain direction. I mean, the the, the creature, the, the thing that I turn into is is not something that I, I wish to. Um, and you can see him kind of like he gets like actively more nervous talking about it. Um, mm. He's like, it's not something that I wish to actively cultivate. It's useful in specific circumstances, but uh, it, it is not something that I, I desire. It, it is a tool. It is a tool like any other to be used in the appropriate moment, but it is a, also a dangerous tool that I don't feel should be, um, w- were my papers to fall mm. into the wrong hands, were somebody else able to unlock this power for themselves uh i feel that it would i i I wouldn't want to push the research further frankly i'm I'm much more interested in 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 containment conscientious practice conscientious (laughs) discovery jacob you shy away from the greatest scientific discovery you have made as a doctor I don't understand why you 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 should embrace this other form. As a matter of fact, I'm surprised you're not in it more often. Uh, we could do with some muscle at any given time, uh, but I would suggest working on your mental capabilities while in that form. It's quite uh, pathetic. Your math skills go down quite significantly, I will say. <laughs> There's so much to unpack there. I'm not even going to begin, but thank you, Dr. Voids, I'm going to say. Um, Jacob, not sure, all not science sure that's is what dangerous until it is properly researched, and that is the opportunity we have been provided. Arabella gets it. See, I get it. <laughs> it is. Stress. Maybe we should change our name to the uh, Guild of um, Careless Practice, then perhaps. But uh, I see nothing is. careless in our practice, Jacob. Now, I've had enough of this conversation until better Jacob shows up again. <laughs> oh, better Jacob! Oh, is that ouch. what we're calling him? <laughs> and I'm going to hover her over to the. <laughs> Ooh. It's all right. Ooh. I promise that we'll Ooh. keep it conscientious. <laughs> I do hope so. We, well, well, we should tarry on nevertheless. I want to know what's in there as much as you do. I mean, my curiosity will get the better of me, I'm sure. Who was uh, asking about uh, m- modes of entrance? Me. Okay. Arabella, there are certainly, from what you can detect and, and observe at, at this stage, um, there are port windows along the side of the ship. They are shuttered, but could conceivably you, breaking through them and entering the, the vessel in the lower deck would be possible. On the main deck of the vessel itself, is um, uh, there is a staircase and a cargo hatch on the top of the main deck, as you can see on the map itself here. Um, and there is, beneath the helm of the ship itself, there is a doorway that leads into the the kind of the top deck cabin and from here you can see through the windows of the top deck cabin there is a scintillating glow coming from the windows on the top deck cabin um as i as i hover over to the uh the top of the boat i'm actually going to tie my rope off and throw it down and peer over and say if we'd like to go on the top of the boat. Um, I suppose you can wade through the water and climb the rope. <sighs> We're going to have to get wet, aren't we? <laughs> We're going to have to get wet again, indeed. You really should attempt flight at some point. It's very beneficial. Oh, 
Um, I'm okay. going to um, cast Polymorph on myself. Uh, the most expensive use of a fourth level spell slot, I'm sure. Um, and I'm going to transform. I mean, I suppose functionally it would probably be something like a, a raven or an eagle, um, but uh, I'd like it to look a bit messed up. It's it's sort of okay. like a, almost like a, a like I'm using the mutagenist power in a in a different way. I sort of bend over and like crunch, almost transformer as the beak emerges out from the back of my neck, and then these bony wings kind of stitch flesh together and feathers kind of Super half poke out from them. Um, I flutter across nightmarishly uh, to the boat. And as soon as I land, I just kind of like pull it off. <laughs> like I'm pulling off a disguise and, and coming out of it. Um, and then uh, didn't have to get wet after all, Dr. Void. I, I put, I'm, I'm going to put a hand on uh, Dr. Jacob's shoulder and I say, Jacob, I want to apologize. I was a little harsh back there. Your other version is not the better version of you. Both versions are imperfect in multiple ways. <laughs> <laughs> Arabella sort of... huffs, pulls up her mask, and just starts, like, breaststroke across the water. <laughs> okay. You all clamor onto the ship through your various means, and I will put us on this version of the map here. Uh, which will give us the ability to s have multiple levels visible at the same time if that becomes mm. necessary. Okay, so on the deck of the ship. Um, so as, as I mentioned before, um, what you've got here is you have the cargo hold hatch, which is here, the staircase down into the lower deck, and then there we we have uh represented over here the the top deck um of course but then there is a doorway here that would lead into the cab the top deck cabin and then these stairs leading up to the the top of the top deck and the glow that we saw was coming from the top deck deck cabin there there is a scintillating glow yes from the windows of the top deck cabin and there are the the shuttered windows of the the lower deck, and it's likely the cargo hold is underwater. It, at least fr from this level, it's the ship is uh, sunk enough that the car if there is a cargo hold to it, it'll be the, down below the water line. Well, I suppose one of us should investigate the tantalizing glow coming from that door. No um, discovery without curiosity, eh, team? Ah. Correct. Uh, who wants to volunteer? I'm already there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Using my uh, power of whatever it's called, uh, metaphysical tether, I'm going to also look and hear through Arabella's through Arabella as I stand back. You open Just for safety respirator goggles. <laughs> you open the door into a well-appointed captain's quarters um there are several sets of tools and shelves of books that immediately strike you as the qu quarters of a wizardly captain um throughout the rest of the room but dominating the center of the room is a scintillating dome of arcane energy it is opaque and it covers the middle of the room and perhaps whatever furnishings might be there okay um, wow. Don't approach the dome of arcane energy. Okay. <laughs> or do. Uh, I I mean I'd be fascinated <laughs> to see what happens to you. Um well, look, I'll start by uh giving a glance over the uh the books and things, just seeing if there's anything in there that kind of um I don't know sparks my my creativity, my imagination but in regards to science, so probably, you know, um, magics that are that are closer to evocation or transmutation are probably. Yeah. I'm just looking for. Can, can I give uh, help on that as I sort of, I assume, sidling in just kind of behind or, or following in behind? Absolutely. Arabella, give me a, um investigation check. Certainly. That is a 17. Several of the books here um are actually versions of various star charts and there are several spell scrolls 
uh, that pertain to various forms of weather control magic. So there is a spell scroll of control water, a spell scroll of gust of wind, a spell scroll uh, of lightning bolt, um, and there are several spell books here that talk about that speak of spells that would it may immediately actually be useful to sailors and ocean voyages. Okay. All right. Um, I'm also, as I'm looking around, I'm looking for any secret compartments because I am a mm. soup. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I want to find stuff. Can Can I just take the lightning bolt scroll? I'm just <laughs> I take lightning any of these me. that you want. There we go. Okay. okay. Um. <laughs> As you scope around, you notice that the dome covers over a rug. And it is, as you just sort of flip the edge of the rug, there is a trap door beneath the rug, but it's also underneath the edge of the dome. I'm going to pause. I'm going to, I fully knowing that Dr. Voids is seeing and hearing through my senses, I'm going to mutter to myself, no discovery without curiosity and step into the dome. Okay. You s s push up against the dome and it is solid energy. <gasps> so you, you're, you cannot move through it. Fascinating. I, I commend you for interacting with it. And I commend you further for not, being disintegrated. <laughs> okay. There's something under this, and I want to get into it. Would it... There might be a way in through the lower deck. We might have to force a way in through the lower deck. At this point, I'm going to come over into the room myself to see it with my own eyes. Uh, is it opaque? I can't yes. see. Yes, okay. it, is, it is opaque. Yep. Hmm. What was that line that you just said, Arabella? No discovery without curiosity. Yes. And I'm going to cast... No. Wait, dimension, does uh, Dimension Door... No, I'm going to cast Dimension Door into the dome? <gasps> okay. Are you going to bring anybody with you? I'm going to bring Arabella. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the two of you dimension door into the dome. Uh, so you can both move yourselves uh, in, in, in there. Um, I, don't, I don't know if this is a good made. idea. No, I'm all for it. Okay. <laughs> Your line got me. You got to Dr. Voids. He, uh, he liked it. Yeah. Okay, I just I just have to check some rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, like, poor Jacob, but just on the outside, like. <laughs> <laughs> God, only in one shots will I make choices. This <laughs> this bold. Okay, I don't know. I'm sure somebody is going to tell me that I got that this is not the correct ruling, but I'm going to go with it because it's cool. This is a Liaman's tiny hut. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> uh, Hello, we're in your house. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as you teleport inside, you can see it. Uh, Whole, shuttering up there's inside the tiny hut is a desk and a chair all laid out with star charts and you can hear that there is somebody shuddering and muttering to themselves underneath the desk can I, can I just stick my head under there <laughs> as you do see, see who it is the crazed looking mage a man who is rather gaunt looking with sunken eyes and a scraggly beard um, and he smells of being unwashed screams uh, as, as as you uh, I forgot I've still got my gas mask yeah, on yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
and uh and he it, it sounds like he he tries is trying to encant a spell um like it, he screams and says fuego and the sparks of a fireball begin erupting from his fingers but putter out as if he's out of spell slots <laughs> that was pathetic it's just, okay let's let's cool it a little bit are you okay Get, get away get away you're not one of them are you you're not going to devour and eat my brains are you i'm gonna uh, take that as you no. know <laughs> <laughs> why would we eat your brains that's horrible and i have much finer taste than that also actually not very good for your health it turns out why do you know that <laughs> And research. I was reading. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, but uh, okay. Who's they? The, the, the voices. The voices. And and it. And as as you begin seeing more of this this man's form, you can immediately see the signs of delirium contamination setting in on uh, on them as. He he begins pulling at, at his flesh. You can see all the eyeballs that have gr- begin growing out of his arms, and that his hair is beginning to fall out. His fingernails have have fallen out in in other places, and he he shudders uh, um, as if maybe there's something talking inside him. But then you can hear this other voice reverberate out from underneath the man's robes, and it says, Feed me! So hungry! And I... Oh, go ahead. Um, I, I'm going to grab his arm, and I'm looking at the eyeballs, and with my... And the eyes um, all look at you. I have amazing bedside manner, and I say, Once you're a corpse, I will be delighted to dissect you. Oh, no. <laughs> and I, I'm I'm going to like try to take a look at his what's going on. Yeah, give me a medicine check. Medicine. What a fascinating specimen. I got a 20. Um, this man is suffering from level five delirium contamination, which means that if he gains one more contamination level, he would transform into a monster. Um, he has developed mutations of uh, ocular tumors all over his body, and um, just sizing around as you investigate him, there is a mouth that has grown in his stomach. Hmm. I I pull a ration out of my bag and throw it to the belly maw. Uh, Don't encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> the the mouth immediately um rips through the man's um like it just chews its way through the purple robes that the wizard is wearing and it and it uh begins devouring the rations and uh, it's it's almost as if the the eyes and the mouth that have grown in this person are almost more control over his body than the person the the, the man himself mm, would typical. we know enough to say he's probably too far gone um well <laughs> he is not too far gone um okay. but he is at the brink um and what you can surmise from looking at him is that he is also in addition to several levels of contamination he has several levels of exhaustion because he hasn't slept in days oh. so if we purge contamination we'll kill him from exhaustion potentially you, mm. you it, purging his contamination in his current state could kill him uh, mm. i mean it this depends is just on what. like the academy to not take the proper precautions <laughs> typical academy mage played with things beyond your comprehension and now you have a stomach in or a mouth in your stomach and eyeballs in your arms and I would say I'm surprised, but I'm not, frankly. Um, before you transform into a horrible monster or die of exhaustion, uh, I have a few questions for you as your um, personal doctor. Um, 
you're he he can barely get out a coherent sentence because for at contamination level five you are incapacitated but for for our purposes he can still speak at the very least mm. um and and he's you're not going to help me academy reward you <sighs> gotta get the cargo back to- are you the captain of this ship and he's yes Ca- mm. i i am master wizard caden very nice. Good name. Um, what cargo were you carrying? A creature. A creature. Some. Some adventurers. They 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 killed it. They asked us to take it back to the Middle Sea. But it's not dead. It's not dead. It's not dead. Ah! Uh, this creature that you were carrying, uh, is it still here? Jesus, don't go down there. Can't see. They're going to come for it. They're going to come for it. It's only a matter of time. Who's they? Uh, the ones that are between the walls. Uh. All right. That. Um... Arabella, what's your diagnosis of this uh, situation? Hmm. I would love to get my hands on whatever this creature is. I, I mean, several of my reagents come from biological species, and clearly whatever this is has great power. Yes, and just like the Academy, they were transporting a dangerous creature and it destroyed them. It's um, uh, fools. Foolish. Uh, and I, can, can I telepathically talk to Jacob outside of the tiny hut? Uh, yeah, uh, I, I think so. Yeah, we'll Great, say yes. Because uh, this is... This whole situation with the with Caden here, not really. Um, I I don't know about that stuff. Caden, <laughs> uh, uh, one final question. Sorry to keep asking so many questions. Uh, not really sorry, but um, can you control this tiny hut that we are in? You're the one in control of it. Yes. Only thing keeping them out. Only thing keeping them from killing me. Only thing keeping them from turning me into one of them. Can't yes, do it. Yes, um, I have a third doctor here, and as the old saying goes, three doctors are better than two. Would you mind allowing my friend in here? I'm not even a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> can't do it. Can't do it. Uh, and you technically can't. You have to d- decide who can enter and leave the tiny hut when you create it. I'm going to need you to lower the tiny hut, Caden, uh, for, first of all, so we can leave. Um, Second of all, so we can get you, uh, and I look to um, Arabella for reassurance that I'm saying something kind here, and I'm like, so we can get him off the the boat? Yeah, you know know that if you drag him, if he can move through the area of the tiny hut, and if you do so, the spell will end. If he leaves the area of the tiny hut. All right, Caden, let's just get you propped up here. Um, Arabella, <laughs> could I get a hand? Watch for the belly maw. Only because I'm wearing gloves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I'm very wearing... strong, though, so you are doing a lot of the lifting. <laughs> I'm a scraggly, scraggly, okay, tall, gangly man, so we're struggling to to get Caden, but I, I'm sure he's a scraggly old man, The whole man time too. we're like, it's all right, Caden, we're here now, you're safe. You're probably going to succumb any minute now, but we'll be here to investigate you further when that happens, Caden. Uh, so you pull Caden out of the tiny hut, and the spell ends. Uh, Jacob, hi. Oh, hello. Uh, sorry to do that. I could only bring one person, and uh, Arabella seemed more willing for the potential of sacrifice than you did. So, yeah, I thought you were dead for sure, um, but uh, here we are. Well, it so happens that we found a useless academy mage who has blundered with uh, <laughs> beings beyond their comprehension, as they do. <laughs> Those silly doppers. <laughs> 
Yes, uh, no, he seems quite um, in, a, in a place, doesn't he? Uh, yes, Jacob, I thought you might be interested in this, and I, I'm just going to show him the belly ma, as if I'm like, I'm not even... Uh, Dr. Voids doesn't even care about the feelings. Yeah, of, he's just like, Kate, look at this. Caden's sitting around the <laughs> captain's chair, and you sort of turn him around, and the eyeballs on his body all open up, and the belly ma goes, Hello! Uh, hello hello there um am i speaking to the captain and i'm speaking at the moor directly um and the the ma goes captain's not here right now feed me uh is uh who is it that i am speaking to any any entity in particular mm, you can call me gobbler got oh okay i'm starting to get the picture here i think Am I am I getting the sense that this is like connected to some planar being, or it's just like a, a mindless mouth that's kind of using his intelligence? It's it might be a, a, a literal mutated manifestation of his actual hunger sense of hunger. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Cool. Yeah. No problem. All right. Well, he's done for. I'll be honest. Uh, I, I mean, I could try to reverse some of this, but the process would probably kill him. So uh, he's probably more useful to us as a as a dissection than a than a interrogation, so to speak. You turn, and Doctor Void's already holding a scalpel. <laughs> yeah, no, take him apart. Uh, oh no, no, actually, no! Okay, so... all right, team. If we can save him, we should try at least try to reverse it. If he dies, he dies. Ah, now the conscientiousness comes back in. I made a promise. <laughs> very good very good arabella um look i can try to reverse it the process will most probably kill him but the problem is if i exert myself too much right now well if we find ourselves in trouble later i won't have the capacity to uh bring out my more and i look at the mouth, excellent point hungry personalities from uh, um dr grusin from your best analysis um the mists in this area um, might be manifesting an effect that is in Drakenheim known as the Deep Haze, which prevents creatures from actually gaining a rest, which would explain why he's exhausted. Um, thus, if he was brought out of this area and allowed to at least rest for a few days, you might be able to bring him to the point where he could survive purge contamination. What if... <laughs> What if I knock him out and cast Spare the Dying? <laughs> Does that get rid of exhaustion? Just to keep him stable. No, just to keep him stable so we can do our thing on the ship mm. and then we can, you know. It, it, if it would prevent... Him being unconscious would prevent him if he does succumb to contamination from turning into a monster and eating you later. Uh Caden, before we hit you with this medically licensed hammer over the head, um, what what was the creature you were carrying? You you seemed to blither and blather about it. Did it have a name, or was it was it anything in particular? Can you tell me more about this creature? Uh, describe it, perhaps. He shudders and he said, and he he grabs you by the shoulders and looks in you in the eyes, and and the, all the eyes in his arm kind of glow for a moment. And he says. <gasps> they called it the Duchess. It's, is it royalty? I like <laughs> it. It's evocative. <laughs> I suppose. Did did the Amethyst Academy name it the Duchess? Was that the? Yeah, I'm sure they did with their fancy words and and superior intellect. <laughs> Can't be too intelligent then if it's regal. <laughs> <laughs> uh. not, not that all that lies still is dead. It's not dead. They said it was dead. It's not dead. Okay. Well, obviously. I think that he needs to calm down. Can we say uh, between between the two doctors and a chemist, can we perhaps have some kind of uh, anesthesia <laughs> that we might inject? The the hammer is effective enough. <laughs> yes, but between all that and the yeah. spare the dying, yes. All right. Well, I want to get a look at this trapdoor. I almost forgot. 
I was so distracted by this uh, bab babbling yeah, the guy. Yes, I, I spin the chair around and push it away so we don't have to worry about Caden anymore. His unconscious. He rolls he rolls off to the corner. Hmm. Now where were we? The the trap door, um the it whatever magic might have held this trap door shut has failed and it will open now. Hmm. Forward into the dark. Uh, Arabella, after you. Absolutely. Open it up. Okay. The trapdoor opens into a very narrow crawl space that um, slinks down in the space between the decks of the ship and connects back down uh, to the the lower level. Um, Beneath it, remembering the phrase "creatures between the walls," looking down, looking down, um, you can see that this it it opens up into this very narrow staircase that is basically leading down between the decks that would go down all the way to the hold. So it's a narrow set of stairs that goes halfway down and then down again. It's not really represented on the map here because it's hard to kind of show, um, but. Uh, You'd need to squeeze down there, but you could get through. Hmm. All right. Well, um, who here has the ability to see in the dark? Raise your hand. Oh, I actually have blindsight out to 10 feet. Because of this, uh, this apothecary feature called Surgeon's Instinct. Okay. Okay. Um I, I, also, I cannot, or at least I wouldn't fit down there if I was to be able to see in the dark, but um, I do and just kind of reach into my component pouch and pull out some flecks of dust that ignite in the air and cast light uh, into sick. my arm. Oh, yeah. you, you brought that too, and I also cast light. And I pull a glass bulb out of one of my pouches on my belt, <laughs> shake it up, and the liquid inside agitates and lights up with bioluminescence. <laughs> Oh, it's you're all like, so clever. It's almost like science has overcome the need for dark vision. <laughs> science trumps <laughs> evolution again. Ah. Ah, 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 ah. And I float down into the hole. Okay. So this is actually going to shortcut you down to the secret lab. Ooh. I love labs. I love a secret lab. I love labs. I love secrets. Okay. <laughs> Those this are the is... two favorite things I love. Put them yeah. together. Yes. <laughs> All right. Perfect. So here we are. Here, um, the the staircase ends down here, and you can see that um, there is a doorway that leads into this room. Um, from so the staircase comes down over here. Um, they all, it's almost like a ladder at this point. And then there is a doorway leading into this room, but you can tell from even this side that this doorway would be a concealed door on the opposite side. Um, so it would allow easy access to whoever's on the other side, but not from this direction. Down here is a very well-appointed la laboratory um, with several tools and in implements used that could be used for the examination or dissection uh, of creatures and corpses, but as, as well as producing various alchemical mixtures. It's surprisingly well equipped for something that you would find on a sailing ship. Um, and with there's none of it is currently active. Um, so everything has been neatly put away and packed away, but it all is all here pre present. And there's no, there's no, body down here presently it's sort of like not in use at the moment correct okay i'm absolutely uh going through and taking any ingredients any um you know in, in, sort in, of instruments that i think i you know might be short of that would be useful or interesting to as, study as you go through go through this there are incredibly rare reagents and chemicals that are stored in 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 here um like th this is the type of stuff where you can imagine working at at 
um, an underfunded chemistry lab in some backwater um, school versus being able to work at like the highest end commercial enterprise in terms of like the quality of the equipment and the ingredients that are in, in this little room. Um, I think that the Guild of Conscientious Practice and Scientific Discovery just got a major upgrade. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to start grabbing some of the alchemical supplies as well. And I'm like, Caden won't be needing these anymore, I'm sure. Are there any um, medical journals, scientific books, but most importantly, journals that might give an indication of what they were researching specifically down mm. here? On the desk is one journal that, as you flip it over, are sketches of a creature um, recently drawn. The, it is a creature that resembles a massive sea serpent um, with, a ma with a great maw and a tentacled sort of corona around it. Um, and there are notes in here that talk, talk about um, uh, mucus-like secretions collected from the body um, stored in safe room B. Um, flesh reactive to delirium seems to have healing property on dead flesh. May want to uh, enhance containment protocols. Um, I'm making a bit of a leap here that may be a little metagaming. Uh, because Ben knows what the Duchess looks like, would uh, Dr. Grustein kind of be able to put those two and two together? Dr. Grustein, uh, um, the 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 Duchess is not is, is not a creature that uh, that Dr. Grustein would have encountered or heard of. Not yeah. not so much not so much like identifying as like I know what this is, but just putting that name and mm. what's happened on this boat kind of together with these pictures. Yes, yes. Okay. You just sort of pick it up, look at it, turn it to the others and be like, I think I have found our royalty. And I don't think she's gonna get it. I don't think she's gonna source. get any marriages. <laughs> <laughs> um perhaps also the source of this uh this unusual mucus stabilizer. It appears we found our extra planar entity. Indeed. Where's safe room B? I suppose we should go look, uh, see if this creature is still here. The, there's another door to this room uh, somewhere. Uh, yes, there, there is a door that leads out of this room. I will go to that door and listen before I open it, just to make sure that there's uh, no noises on the other side. Okay, give me a perception check. I got a 12. Okay. Um, as you um, listen at the door, you can hear a faint crackling like electricity on the other side. I'm going to open the door. Okay. <laughs> The door slides open. Um, I, I realize I should have produced a, a token using the new artwork uh, for this, but unfortunately I ha still have the old token uh, loaded up in Roll20. So my apologies to all of you that have are missing out on the fantastic artwork from our book. But um, in the midst of this massive storage chamber that is covered in a thick haze and chemical secretions, is the corpse of the creature depicted in the drawings and the uh, and, and the journal there are several wounds on its side and still the arrows of uh, the, still um placed on a table nearby are the harpoon shots that have been extracted out of its body it is here in the midst of this room and nearby it is a Around the swirling mists are motes of purple octarine energy hovering in the air. However, near the creature, just gently washing 
the body of the duchess with a strange cloth of either moss or lichen or perhaps algae is a bizarre looking creature it has long spindly limbs and wears a tattered robe and in place of a head it is simply a mass of octopus like tentacles and it is is reaching into a bucket and gently washing the body of the duchess as it does so another mass of of thin um almost spaghetti noodle like tentacles hovers nearby almost gently massaging the flesh of the creature as you open the door you feel a psychic stab in your mind and i'm going to have you two roll you all roll for initiative I believe that it's going to go better this time. No, it's better. What do we got? I got a 12. A 12 for Arabella? Uh, I have gotten a 9. A nine. I have also gotten a 9. Consistency. Wh which of you would like to go first? Uh, Jacob can go before me. I feel like we're both like, so, oh, after you, so, oh, after you. Very polite. <laughs> I open Rawr! the door for you and there's all this horribleness. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, as you open the doorway into this eldritch site, you see the strange dweller that is here, the creature with the mass of tentacles. And you feel it grip into your minds um, as it um, as it reaches out towards you, Dr. Voids, and it with its hand, it almost mimes plucking upon your puppet strings. Um, give me a wisdom saving throw. My mind can't be handled like this. I am far too smart. Uh-oh. <laughs> I got a seven. Uh, you take 14 Ooh. psychic damage. Uh. And in a craze, you reach into your vest for a dagger or a scalpel and um, stab one of your allies with it. Make an attack. Ah. attack with a, Make a weapon attack. Uh, all right. Uh, is a scalpel going to be... Where's my call short it a, sword? Yeah, call it a short sword or a dagger. Yep. Please call it a dagger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was thinking the same thing. I pull out a dagger, getting... Who am I attacking? I am attacking... Uh, I'm going to attack Jacob. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, getting uh, an 18 to hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that uh, is. Sorry, I, I I've lost my mind, and it's really upsetting because I'm an alienist, and this never happens. Uh, I do I do uh, four damage. Alrighty, Arabella, it is your turn. All right, um, I am going to do something possibly bad. You two remember where they're standing, right? Um, okay, great. I'm going to probably come into this space and I'm going to um, basically ooh, this could be a, a bad decision but I throw down this um, little package that sparks for a second and then just starts billowing white smoke and cast a fog cloud all over that area there. Ooh, okay. This little fog cloud. Seizing control of the mists, uh, the fog cloud blankets over the entire area. Anything else you'd like to do with your turn? Um, I would like to... No, I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's okay. It. Okay. Um, it's a 20-foot radius, correct? Um, because it's cast uh, at a higher level... 
the, the radius increases. <laughs> oh, so, so it's going to be like see, the whole second, third, fourth. Yeah, it's going to be huge. It's okay. going to be massive. So it's like the it, whole area. It increases whole area. by 20 feet. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Grusin, it's your turn. Okay. Now I can't see anything now, right? We're completely fogged out. Yeah, we're fogged out. Okay, <laughs> cool. No, that's all right. Uh, would I still, though, um, for, uh, for the sake of kind of moving around and stuff, I kind of have an idea where everything is. Yes, around me you do. You do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Because you can still hear and and out of the doorway. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's fine. Um. All right. Cool. Well, I uh, go as I am stabbed uh, in the chest by a scalpel. Uh, kind of like grab your hand to pull pull the hand out, and then try to stagger away in the room, uh, going da da. Uh, dirt kind of about to there and then when i get there as my blood is like dripping down onto the floor and my vision's kind of fading in and out a little bit uh from blood loss um uh the blood turns purple in from color. one scalpel stab uh, i'm not a mighty man uh, <laughs> he doesn't like seeing blood it, it takes him down yeah exactly uh the blood kind of changes from like a red to a purple as it's like falling down my eyes change color uh, and thank you for the um mood setting mists to hide the transformation uh but you all hear the sounds of bones breaking flesh tearing and uh my voice kind of a uh, being enveloped into a uh, as i undertake uh, my transmogrifying mutation uh, into my larger self. All righty, let's let's drop that down there for you. Boom. Woo! Um, and then, but where? Oh no, maybe I can't. I don't think I can use the help action because I don't think uh, I can't use it against something I can't see. So I'm just going to like you. Can, oh, I was going to say you can see Doctor Voids, and then I remember he's mind controlled. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I'm just going to stumble sort of, you know, up to about there uh, and end my turn for the moment. Okay. Oh, I'm, I might have just, just been within your vision because it, it's um, a six square radius is the fog cloud. Well, I think to, to give the help action, I need to be next to the target if I'm going oh, to help I see. I see. Unless, there's, right. unless there's something you need help with, like I kind of get down on one knee and I'm like, over there. I don't need help <laughs> okay all right dr voids do i make another wisdom save no or you, am i no nope, i'm no, good the pluck the puppet strings just uses your reaction you are under still under control of your character i just get to play around with you <laughs> can i can i just uh don't uh, don't mean to reverse but uh someone's just pointed out in the chat and i think it's a very good point the acid blood gets procked against dr voids <gasps> when he attacked oh, me oh yeah oh true so good pick there. That was yeah. a good, good pick. Oh, Do not uh, watch. This will make this a very fun battle because <laughs> you all took it. <laughs> yeah. Um, are we still applying? I know we had a chat during the break. Are we still applying intelligence modifiers to this? Yeah, let, let's use it as written for now. But all right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, seven points of uh, acid damage he would have taken. Thank you. All right, Dr. Voids. Hey. Hey. Uh, Dr. Voids getting splashed with acid does quickly jot down a note in his journal that says stab jacob for results um understanding now that stabbing you is a surefire way to get uh better jacob to show up um so yes <laughs> uh dr voids uh, okay here's a question we're in a big fog cloud right mm-hmm my metaphysical tether allows me to use the senses as, of anyone linked to me. So you uh, could use, yeah, you Arabella's could, blind sight. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm going to allow cool. this. Yeah, I come up next to Arabella, which makes it easier because I imagine seeing your own body from somebody else would be confusing. But if I'm next to her, then I feel like I can aim my attacks better using her vision. Um, although she only has blindside out to a range of 10 feet. Yes. All right. Um, so I can't really see very well what's happening. Um, not yet. <laughs> not yet. Uh, so I am going to, oh boy. Um, I, 
Remind me, Fog Cloud, can I target any of these creatures with a spell that requires... If, if the spell says you have to see them, then you have to very see them. sorry. Yeah. I'm very sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Is the Duchess moving or doing anything, or is it just not these other two? Not that you saw. Not that you saw. All right. I am going to cast Tranquilizing Toxin on this one over here. Um, so one target I choose within range. Doesn't okay. say I need to see it. We Ooh. might need to change that. We might. We might. Must make a constitution saving throw or take 8d6 poison damage and become poison until the end of your next turn. turn. While poison in this way, the target is stunned. On a successful saving throw, the target takes half damage and is not poisoned. Okay, so that is my uh, my uh, my lurker on the threshold. Uh, I think I'm gonna be be failing that one uh, pretty bad. Uh, yeah, right. yeah, I got a fifteen. Wonderful. Um, so that's eight d six. No, I actually only get a 12. I was looking at the wrong stat block. That's for my Liminal Herald. Yeah. All right. That's a lot of dice rolled. That's a lot of ones and twos. Uh, that's going to be 26 damage. Okay. And it is stunned. All right. And poisoned. That said, this does trigger its Reflect Pain ability. Uh-oh. If the Limital Herald takes damage from an attack or spell, which targets only it, it can cause the attacking creature or spellcaster to take psychic damage equal to the damage dealt by the triggering attack or spell. So you take 21 psychic damage. As the pain you inflict upon this creature is reflected back into your own mind. So uh, we're in a mental battle right now, I imagine. Like I am, I am trying to tranquilize it by like gripping its mind, but in doing so, I can't fathom its own existence, and so our mental capacities are at war with one another. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it makes Dr. Voids angry because he thought he was the smartest creature on any plane. Okay. This is so like that fight at the end of WandaVision where they just yeah. sit up and start looking at each other. Oh, In yeah. the midst of the fogs. Well, it is stunned though, so I don't get a turn uh, otherwise. So my, uh, so I have to now go to my Far Dweller. Fortunately for the Far Dweller, uh, they have blind sight too. Um, so, our Far Dweller um, is going to take advantage of the situation to scramble your minds. Oh! Um, no. all, all, all of you need to make an intelligent saving throw. However, if you are concentrating on a spell, you make the saving throw with disadvantage. And you'll take extra damage if you fail the save. I am not. I am. <laughs> I am right. not. Ooh, ooh, okay, okay. 11 for my lower roll. So that's um, an 18 saving throw. Oh, okay. Uh, so you do succeed. 22. 21. Everyone's got a good We're so smart. We're so smart. <laughs> no, I just rolled high. Remember, I'm dumb as a doorbell oh, yeah. right now. Okay. <laughs> I got Huge, very yeah. lucky. Okay, yeah. so so it would have been 25 damage, so it's half, so it's 12. And uh, yeah, Arabella, had you failed that, that would have been 50 psychic damage to you. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> oh. So, but, it, but it's 12, right? <laughs> yes, but it's 12, because you, ma you made okay. your save with disadvantage, <laughs> yep. Good, 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 good. Um... Cool, 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 cool. Okay, that is, um, it is going to take advantage of the fact that it has blindsight and it hopes you don't to move over here. 
Uh, can I take an attack of opportunity with disadvantage? Do I know it's there? I'll give this? it to you. I'll give it to you. Cool. Um, uh, that's going to be not huge, a 13. Uh, it's That'll miss, I'm afraid. Okay, cool. No problem. <laughs> Arabella, I, I'm over to your turn. What are you going to do? Um, okay. Well, blind sight for the bad guys and not for my allies is not uh maybe ideal. So um let's see, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. I'll just run, I'll just run all the way over here. Great. Um, and then I would love to cast uh Oh, oh no! Wait, 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 wait! I got to think about this. I got to think about this spacing more carefully than that. I got to recount my spacing. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I can't do what I want to do, and I'm very sorry to all of you. Um, but I'm abandoning you for a minute. Um, <laughs> so instead of doing that, instead of doing that, I am going to yeah, sure. I'll come. I'll come down to where I was, somewhere around here, um, and I will instead cast um so i'm going to pull out a weird looking little um uh like i don't i don't know it's basically it's basically just a glass vial let's be real uh and i'm going to just whip it out across the fog as i see that kind of shape retreating away from my my blind sight um because it turns out firebolt doesn't require you to see a person so that's neat um, and I'm going to basically have a mini version of what I did with the fireball earlier, this nice. um, Fraxinella oil that ignites upon impact. Um, and I'm going to roll to hopefully hit this guy. And I mean, this, uh, this, this, I'm going to hit the Aboleth as well. Can I? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Could just because, I mean, fun fact for the people at home, this is, um, another, uh, ability that I have. Uh, which allows me to target two creatures with a with certain damage dealing cantrips that only target one creature. I explained that very badly, but you get it. You get it. <laughs> okay. So that is um, one of them is like a twenty two, and the other one's a twenty three to hit. The, wow! Both hit. Yeah, sweet. <laughs> Little lights of flame yeah. over in the fog. Um, and where are my D10s? There are D10s. Because this is a boop, 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 advanced cantrip. There's one. All right. So 2D10. So that is 16 damage. Oof. Do you want me to roll separate damage? or No, that's damage? fine to, to roll, roll the same. Cool. Looks good to me. Um, are you leaving the fog cloud in place? I wasn't, I wasn't sure if you were saying that you're leaving it or, t or taking it down. I had a plan for taking it down. Uh, I'm going to leave it for the moment. Okay. My apologies. <laughs> okay. Dr. Grusin, what is it going to be? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I. Uh, Smash. <laughs> what, what can I, you know, trying not to, to, to overreach here. Um, what is it that I'm aware of that's around me? Like, I don't think the, is there, is it like a spider-like creature up the top? Am I aware that that's there? Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you're definitely aware that the, the, the creature is, is there and you're aware of the, the, the form of that it is like, you can hear, hear it's kind of eldritch presence as it reflected out the pain back towards, uh, Dr. Void. So if you do want to move up to it, to attack it, you can certainly do so. It'll just be done with disadvantage. Yeah, no problem. Is the 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 big uh, aboleth like creature that I assume is the Duchess uh, that hasn't moved at all yet? Like that's no, and and the the it. fire damage from Arabella's if it was regenerating, the fire damage maybe has stayed that regeneration. I'm so glad you said the word regeneration because I just remembered uh, being in my monstrous form. You see the wound that was dealt uh, mm. by Dr. Voids oh, before sick. start to like close up as I uh, heal just a little bit. Uh, actually, it puts me back to full. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, all right. In that case, um, look, I'm going to try something a little bit 
hulky here, but I'm just a bit angry that the 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 other dude ran away from me. So what I want to try and do is like run into the Aboleth and like hoist it across the room as if I'm throwing it um, to the to the east side of the room. Uh, okay, trying to kind of catch the the Aboleth. Give me a strength check. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to move myself to there. I love this. Throwing the throwing the Duchess. <laughs> uh, ooh, fifteen. Okay, you move up against it. It's it's on a sla- like a, it's hoisted up slightly. So as you crash into it, you push it forward, cr- sending it crashing through the the ladder leading down. And as it does so, a f- flash of energy reverberates out because of this purple sort of void space here this rift to the space between worlds and as uh as its body gets close to this this rift the um something to its form is almost being pulled in by the gravitational pull of the the energy rift that is in in the room um i'm gonna say that it's it does slam into the other two creatures um uh but but you can't really see with the fog cloud if they've been knocked prone or what's happened with the two of them. Gotcha. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to use the rest of my movement to kind of, and again, this is all just like, not really in a rage, but just like an intense kind of like, you know, uh, 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 violence. Fling that off the table or off whatever it was on across the room and then charge across where it was towards the creature to the north side of the boat. Um, and as I take swings at it, uh, I'm doing the help action. Uh, okay. The bonus action. Sounds good to me. Uh, it's actually stunned, so that negates the disadvantage that you would have from not being able to see. Oh, okay. Am I able to... Because I have a multi-attack, but I assumed hoisting the Duchess would have been a whole action. I would say that that was a shove. So that's what replaces one of your attacks. Oh, okay. I'll, yeah. uh, I'll take a swing at it then. Why not? Uh, that's going to be a 25. It's a hit. Alrighty, here we go. Uh, okay, that's not too bad. That's oh, only roll one of these again, not all of them. Uh, twenty two. Uh, uh, yeah, twenty two. You smash it to pieces. <laughs> uh, just what it, it, as you charge across the room. I just imagine you can't see too much, so you just are barreling through the room in your eldritch form, sending the the form of this creature flying like a fish, and then just plowing through the, uh, the, the other creature, destroying it. Um, it's stunned, doesn't even know what, what happens to it. Um, with that, Dr. Voids, what do you want to do? Um, let's see here. I think... I think I'm going to. Sorry, I had an idea, but it was under the assumption that creature was going to survive, and now it didn't, and now I'm backpedaling on my idea. Um, I think I'm just going to go with the classic. I'm going to use my mental influence. Uh, the The fog cloud is still up. Yes. Yes. Um, but if I come up here next to Arabella and again, seeing through Arabella, oh, again, only 10 feet. So I can't make this creature out. Um, I can still fire at it with disadvantage, right? Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's fire at it with disadvantage. Eldritch Blast. Here comes the first one. Ooh, nice. Uh, that's going to be... 24 to hit it's a hit and um with that i'm going to use my mental influence psychic point to add an additional five to whatever i roll here so that's going to be uh 11 damage okay and um, in response to that because we are at time um the creature being overwhelmed by your barrage of of fire and magic it's going to cast vanish to the space between worlds and it dives into the rift which closes behind it disappearing and as the eldritch creatures uh are now gone this rock the the gently crashing waves of the ship 
uh, leave a silence in the rest are the only thing they beyond silence that you can hear. Is the Duchess still here? Yeah, its body is still here. Well, I suppose uh, victory for us now. I'm frustrated. I'm running through the fog, but then I drop it as soon as the thing's gone. <clears throat> hmm. We lost it. I wanted to study that thing's brain. Indeed. More concerning is uh, the cargo that I was hoping to acquire from the Amethyst Academy seems to be a little large to carry. Well, uh, they did leave us some um, maps and, and, and oh, not maps, sorry, scrolls. Do I think that this boat could sail again? Um, is the mast broken or was the mast the, the masts are are intact and you're down in the lowest level of of the of the boat and it still isn't flooded so perhaps you have a scroll of control water and a scroll of gust what i was thinking maybe we acquire some um resources i mean we're lacking funding for the uh, guild of uh, conscientious practice and uh, sorry, I have to read my notes to get it. Scientific <laughs> discovery. Uh, I'll remember it one day. It's the GCPSD. Uh, it's much simpler. Yes, that's way easier to remember. The the seven letters of randomness. Anyway, um, yes, I say we sail the boat out of here. Let's 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 get out of here before they show up. Uh, yes, uh, taking this Duchess from the Amethyst Academy. Uh, I mean. There is one concerning thing, though, and I'm going to, uh, I poke the corpse of the Duchess, and I'm like, it, it, it appears dead to me, although, uh, what's his name upstairs? Um, Belly Ma is what I wrote down for his name. Um, uh, he mentioned that this creature was still alive and perhaps drawing those other creatures to it and creating these thralls. Uh, it's and judging by the harpoons off to the side here and the many wounds that seem to have healed on this creature already, it's seen battle before and the Amethyst Academy acquired it. I wonder what they were planning to do with this body. Well, I agree, this is an extremely dangerous specimen, and I don't quite like the idea of remaining on a ship that moored with it aboard. It is perhaps more conscientious, if not safer, to keep it in our hands than let the Amethyst Academy get hold of it. I'm sure that once we dismember the beast, it will no longer be able to act. As I was. wonder, as, as a chemist, if we could synthesize the saliva of the creature to perform other types of mutations and perhaps start our own sort of controlled mutation variation interesting perhaps we precisely could precisely my interest in experimenting doctor mm. well as our three mad scientists get to work with their absconded ship that is where we will leave our scene who knows what strange and occult experiments they will get up to with a ship full of academy supplies and a the strange body of an eldritch abomination. Who knows, indeed. <laughs> Who needs funding when you can go get your own Abilet course? <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, what a lovely game session. Thank you so much. And But that is where we will leave our story this time, <laughs> with that scene in mind. <laughs> I have a question that I saw pop up in chat. Do you feel that this is taking place in timeline with uh, current Drakenheim season? We'll just have to find out. All right. All right. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> right, that's our line. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, no, that was so fun. Uh, was thank you, wonderful. Monty, for running the game yeah. tonight. Thank you so um, much for running. Uh, yeah. Well, it was my pleasure. You, you three were my my thanks to the th three of you. It is not easy to come to a one shot with a brand new playtest class and just 
get into it and play those characters and i'm so blown away by like the distinctiveness of your characters and like it was really awesome uh 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 to see just the i, I love these characters already just how they've all developed it was really really cool <laughs> i'm really worried about grustein uh stuck on a team with these two <laughs> <laughs> I, I like the fun. tension. I like, you know, yeah. like the in the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, there is the, you know, the the moral tension in the group. Uh, I was surprised when I was like, "Well, we just kill him." You were like, "Wait, wait, 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 wait." I was like, <laughs> "Okay, well, that's good. It's good to know we have complex moral boundaries, not not simple mm. uh, palette." I can be callous, moral. but you know, only when it matters. My character wasn't <laughs> callous at all. I, no. <laughs> yeah, high He's value. the heart of the group. Life. Yeah. He's the, the heart. He has bedside manner. Uh, yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. I I enjoyed playing playing with you guys because, like, I don't Thank know, it was so just much. fun to, to yeah. bounce bounce off of it was a lot of I, the, all three characters were really just mm. fun. It was just so fun. Yeah, mm. very distinctive. I really love how it's it's so interesting because you see how I think one of the big goals that we had in mind with this class, how many different archetypes can be realized with just the base class of the apothecary and how even in a party where everyone is playing the same class, you get very different feeling characters. And I'm really proud of that. Like, I, I think that's a, it's, it's an interesting actual, like you think about things like stress testing and pl having everyone in the party play the same class. And is it still fun and interesting? Mm. And yes, I think is actually something that, is really worth keeping in mind as we as we continue to to develop the class through playtesting, and I really look forward to hearing what people do with it when they when they get their hands on things in in October, because all the backers of Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim that's the goal is the Kickstarter ends midway through September, so we're up for just about uh, just about three weeks still uh, to, yeah. get, to get it on, and then. Uh, halfway through October, um, we haven't got an exact date. I think we're thinking like mid October, we're going to release the full Apothecary class level one to 20 to all backers so they can start playtesting it and using it for themselves. And I'm really curious to see. I, I, I hope other people will play a full Apothecary group because it's a lot of fun. It is That's a lot of fun. And I, I got to say, one of my favorite aspects of tonight, and uh, on break, uh, my partner told me that I was giddy with excitement when I went out there. Um, it was watching all three of these characters do exactly what I wanted their shtick to be. After that first combat encounter, it was I was flying around blasting people. Uh, we got to see a mutagenist turn into a monster and punch a water elemental. Uh, and we got to see the chemists literally blow everything up on the screen, <laughs> except their allies. And so, yeah. like, everybody did their thing. And it was really, really fun to watch. Yeah. And uh, it, it just, I don't know, I felt really joyful watching the class that Monty and I created do exactly what it was intended to do. Thank you for letting us play with these things that you've designed. You know what I mean? You were just like, here, go, have fun. And there was so much to play with. Well, th mm. thank you. I, I was really, honestly, I was worried that I was giving you guys, like, the fire hose of information because, like, you got, I, I think we sent you, like, 100 pages worth of <laughs> worth of stuff, but you made all your characters and and put that all together. And and honest, honestly, I'm not... I, 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 I do wonder um, maybe if I, I'm not sure what state everyone's character sheets are are in, but maybe if there's a way that we can eventually share those character sheets so people can see what the builds were, that'd be really cool. Um, but uh, the but thank you both so much for for just ta taking this on. Kelly and I have played a couple games with apothecaries and and whatnot through our playtesting, but it was really cool just to see those different results and those different scenarios. It, it, really awesome. Mm. I really like the moment when we all cast light in different ways. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I actually thought that was, it was really cool how the apothecary really asks you to think about, like just there's something about the class immediately that I think it's like, oh, what does your spell casting look like? Because it, yeah. The, it, yeah, there's something about the class, the way I think we had that in mind when we were writing it, where it was like, yeah, think about how your character engages with materials in their casting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, absolutely. No, I I absolutely love playing. So thank you so much for inviting us on. And the mutagenist is a lot of fun to just hulk out. And please, I know I know it needs to be, but it's like 
five d six when punching things is a lot of fun to just be like, oh, I hit. All right, here we go. Um, yeah. I'm not quite sure how that balances out with it being an action to transform. But, uh, I, I think I think it's a. I, we might have to tweak it a little. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. It's it's so hard because like. It's it's hard when we're playtesting, and this is why getting the playtest out is going to be so important, because Monty, you're an incredible DM, and you know how to balance really, really well. Um, and for us players, I can't say that rolling 5d6 is bad, or critting on a fireball is bad, or... Mm you know, anything, any other shenanigans we pulled because it was all really fun. Me targeting six creatures with uh, pestilence, that so uh, the, uh, doing like probably some amount of damage across all of the creatures there. Like there's, there's discussion on mm. whether we should nerf some of these, but at the same time, it just felt so fun as a player to be able to do these things. So that's where the big question comes in. And I think that's where the open play test is going to be important because as a player, I just love doing cool stuff. Yeah, awesome. Well, we're we're a little over time, but I I do want to give the opportunity. Um, both uh, both a big thank you, Dale Kingsmill and Ben Barron. Um, where can people that watch Dungeon Dudes find your amazing work elsewhere on the interwebs? Oh, oh, I was waiting for you. Um, uh, so uh, Dale and I are both on the Eldritch Lawcast, which is a weekly D&D and tabletop RPG discussion podcast with James Hake and Sean Merwin, mostly filling out our roster. Um, but we've been very blessed to have yourself, Monty and Kelly, uh, on as guests from time to time. Um, so that's every week on the uh, Ghostfire Podcasts uh, YouTube channel is the name of it. So go check it out. Um, and then we also have the Ghostfire Gaming YouTube channel where I sort of delve into dark fantasy um, style of running D&D, which I feel uh, pegs very, very similarly, or dovetails is maybe the word I'm looking for with uh, Drakenheim. So uh, if you want to know how to run vampires in a really distinct, cool, dark fantasy way, uh, go check out that as well. Hey, and I'm Dale Kingsmill, and you can find me on YouTube on the channel Monarchs Factory. I talk about lots of stuff, but a lot of it is D&D. Um, and in between, I am on Twitter, at Daily Dale. Boom, plug. Although Dale is spelled D-A-E-L. It's Daily Normal and then D-A-E-L. <laughs> Great. Gotcha. Great stuff. Um, and of course, Kelly and I, the Dungeon Dudes, but we're on our own channel. So, um, but we do have um, in it. But of course, check out our Kickstarter. Drakenheim.com will take you right to the page for Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim, where you can get your hands on all these new spells that we were casting. Uh, the stats for the monsters that we were using tonight as well are going to be in 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 the book. Uh, although I don't know. Some of them might be still a stretch goal. We haven't unlocked yet. We'll see uh, if we can fit them in there. Um, might have. I don't unlock them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get on get, it. Get in there. Come on. Get in there. Um, and uh, and of course the apothecary class. And Kelly, we got a Patreon, right? Yeah. We do. We have a Patreon. It, uh, there's a couple Patreons that you can check us out in. Or sorry, there's only one Patreon, but there's two Discords. There we go. So if you check us out on Patreon, you get access to our exclusive Discord just for patron members. Uh, Monty and I are in there frequently, and you can chat with us. There's a lot of talk right now about the Apothecary, about the new subclasses, a lot of behind-the-scenes information if you want direct access to Monty and I about this Kickstarter. But... If you aren't able to join our Patreon, we are currently answering questions over on Ghostfire's Discord. Uh, so Ghostfire Gaming has a Discord. There is a Drakenheim channel on there, and we're answering questions about the upcoming Kickstarter there as well. So you can find us on either of those. If you want the latest and greatest behind the scenes info on all things Drakenheim and all things Dungeon Dudes, that's going to be on our Patreon exclusive Discord. But you can also just ask us a few questions about what's coming up in this book over on Ghostfire Gaming. Amazing. Well, thank you so much to our incredible guests. Thank you out there for watching, and we will see you next time in Drakenheim. <laughs>